Hey, Link Frequencies Open. Welcome to Shield of Tomorrow, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Campbell, and I'll be your GM for this adventure. Uh, this is a game that we've been kind of moving towards for a while now. Um, I don't know if our cameras have switched over yet, but check out our set. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce everybody, but if if you're in chat right now saying holy shit, we are with you on that. Um, we got a lot of shout outs and announcements, but before I get to that, I want to introduce my crew. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start over here with our doctor. If you want to, and you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Introduce, Introduce? yourself, yes. I think is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and then your character and go ahead. My name is Amy Dallin. Uh, you've seen me around the channel. I play Dr. Thrillo Shashiros, the Andorian Chief Medical Officer of the USS Sally Ride. We have an audience. Uh, hello, everyone. In the interwebs, I am Bonnie Gordon. Uh, I will be playing Ensign Lark Sage, taking the helm. Bajorn, raised on Earth, though. Yay! Oh! Hooray for our side. All right, moving on. All right. Hello, I am Aliza Pearl, and I'm playing the Vulcan Science Officer, Lieutenant Commander Talan. Yes! Yeah! So we have Logical. some Vulcan fans in the audience tonight. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, I'm Hector Navarro. I'm playing human captain of the USS Sally Ride, Rafael Martinez. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, captain. And I am Sam DeLev, and I will be playing Janiel Rue, XO and tactical officer aboard the USS Sally Ride. Yes, indeed. Yes. For those of you who watched uh, Eric's TBD RPG, um, I've heard a lot of y'all talking about this. It's true. Sam is going to get blasty in this game. Uh, it's finally going to happen. The, the, the loving pacifist is about to become blasty. Um, <laughs> so, um, before we get into any other announcements, I have to do some quick shout outs because look at this thing and look at all of this. Um, so first off, I wanna give a quick shout out to Novos who hooked us up with these freaking sweet uniforms. You'll, you'll notice that everyone's fully <laughs> dressed tonight except me. I'm wearing my Galaxy Quest t-shirt underneath my uh, Star Trek uh, jacket. So that's appropriate. <clears throat> um, <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and you can all look forward to many a snort laugh from Bonnie Gordon. Sorry. Um, it's going to be fantastic. No. Um, we're gonna, what we're going to need to do is make a compilation and just like mash it all together. It's um, a drinking game. Y'all know what to do. It's a drinking game every time Bonnie snort laughs. Oh, boy. Um, also, real quick, uh, I want to give a shout out to Flip This Bitch. That is the name of the company. Oh. They are the people who built this set. Yeah. Um, they are also well. responsible, I, if y'all well. were with us earlier this evening, they also built um, the sets you're gonna be seeing launching on Geek and Sundry Twitch for the rest of the week. So you're gonna see, you've already seen, if y'all were tuning in earlier today, Minds and Crafts, their new amazing set was built by Flip This Bitch. And, uh, and this incredible uh, bridge uh, for the Sally Ride, this, this set right here, it's pretty incredible. Um, which leads me to my next thank you to CBS, who we Woo! were in contact with and were totally cool with us um, doing all of this. Wait, um, the CBS? The CBS. And specifically, I also want to thank the CBS Star Trek archives, who, when we reached out to them to talk to them about L cars, they sent us sets, uh, pictures from the set of Voyager to help us be a little more detailed, which was pretty surprising. So that was pretty rad. Um, so thank you to CBS for being so cool with us. And, uh, and uh, to the archive, you guys are great. Um, obviously, I would like to thank um, Modifius. Um, if you guys don't know, we are going to be playing uh, Star Trek Adventures. Now, this is a role-playing game that is not even out yet. I think the PDF may have come out recently. I think I saw that Modifius had released a PDF of the core book. But the, the game itself has not been published on hard, in hard copy yet. And a lot of the supplements have yet to come out. But Modifius has been great. They've hooked us up with everything. We've got more stuff incoming. We've got our snazzy dice. We got those in the mail today. Um, oh. I don't know if you guys can see them, but they made Star Trek dice. One, uh, and they're all colored to each uh, uh, like position that you play. Command, operations, and science. It's pretty amazing. Uh, thank you, Modifius. They also sent us uh, uh, counters, and <clears throat> the GM forgot them. So, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I also want to thank Chris Birch, Sam Webb, and Nathan Dowdle, um, because uh, they, uh, those are the guys over at Modifius who've been hooking us up and like chatting with us and helping us put this game together. They, they're, they are all Trekkie fans to the core and have been brilliant in helping us put together this little thing. 
uh, this, this game that we came up with here. Um, and there's a lot of big plans moving forward that I'm not allowed to announce just yet, but lots of big stuff coming down the pipe uh, with Modifius and this show. So um, another reason to stay tuned, <coughs> even if you don't like the show. Um, so uh, also, I want to give a shout out to the Library Bards for giving us Bonnie Gordon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. thank your other half. I will. Uh, Xander. He's probably watching, actually. Yes. Oh, cool. Hi, <laughs> and Xander. Very, he's very jealous right I know. Now, Xander sure. wants to play Star Trek with us. We'll get him on here. Okay. Xander will play Star Trek. But if you guys haven't checked it out yet, Bonnie and Xander released a song recently. Um, what is the... What is the, It's a... It's the, now you've got now the bridge, got the bridge. It's adorable. Oh, and you yeah. sound incredible. Thank like, you. Oh, my God. And you can sound also see... Sound and look. Sound and look. You can also see Erica Ishii and Vince Castle in that yes. music video. Yeah. So mm -hmm. definitely check that out. Eric is a great Sulu. She is a great Sulu. I did double take <laughs> when I saw her. Yeah. Um, so to wrap up our intro here, um, just to give everyone a heads up. So when we move forward with this game tonight, um, this is a brand new system that we have been crunching for the past couple of weeks. So moving forward, we're going to, <laughs> Sam is very happy about this because <laughs> Sam crunches game systems for breakfast. Um, <laughs> and... Um, we are going to be learning the system as we go. We've got, we've, I think we've got a pretty good strong, gra uh, a pretty strong grasp of it at this point. But um, so, uh, thankfully, at, at, throughout the game, you're probably going to be seeing us reference rules and stuff like that. So you guys can probably learn along with us, and we'll do our best to describe what we're doing. Um, so y'all basically get a living play test uh, right in front of you. Um, I also encourage you to check out YouTube because there's been a few uploaders who have actually posted their play tests up on YouTube, which have been very useful in getting down some of the basics of the rules as they've evolved. So yeah, thumbs up on all of that shite. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Does anybody have any other announcements? Uh, yes, Sam, what would, you, would you, what would you like to announce, Sam? Play ça change, play c'est la même chose. <laughs> I'm excited. Sam is excited, everybody. Okay, so this is new. I, I, I didn't think, uh, I wasn't sure. I was Sam gonna, speaks for all of us. Sam <laughs> speaks, sure. Sam, yep. is, we Sam is all of us. <laughs> Did you I, have? I'm, I'm probably jumping the gun because it's probably the, the next part, but I, I just wanted to thank our two invisible crew members, the, the writers. Yes, yeah. I actually have them written down here to thank. Um, our writers are Nick Gilman and Rick Budd, um, yeah. who you all might know from Vast. They are deep lovers of Star Trek. Those two have it in their DNA. Um, in fact, everybody, everybody out here right now who's playing this game is an incredible Star Trek fan. I think, Eliza, you are actually, aren't you in an improv troupe that Yes. You I'm, want to talk to you about that real quick? Yes, I'm part of the Improvised Generation, which is a narrative genre improv group that does, um, we have our own ship, it's called the USS McGinley, and it's, I'm the captain on that <laughs> ship. <laughs> um, yeah, we're doing, we're actually going to do a show at Comic-Con uh, in Old Town oh, on shit. Thursday night, July 20th Ooh. at 8 p.m., I believe. I so if you follow me on Twitter and follow Improvised, at Improvised Gen, E-G-E-N, then we'll send out more info as we get closer to the date. But Ooh, we're gearing up for rad. that. I didn't realize you guys were doing so a show cool. at Con. That's really Yeah, it rad. was just confirmed like today. I oh, think. okay. Well, yeah, that would be why so. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Ooh, ooh. Okay, Bonnie, what's Speaking up? Speaking of Star Trek, I have to do a shout out because I know there's people watching from the Star Trek experience back in the day in Las Vegas. Uh, of which you were a part of. I was. I was part of the closing, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, oh, I know there's people uh, that were a part of the Star Trek experience that, that were so excited for this, so. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Can I give I, one more Star Trek shout Yeah, out? yeah, what's one more Star the, Trek um, shout The USS Stephen Hawking, uh, the Hawking Time Ship Club. Uh, it's my Starfleet chapter, Ooh. based out of Long Beach. Uh, I just want to give them a shout out because uh, I love them and uh, they're a wonderful family, so. Um, and, and in closing, before we jump into the game, unless there's any other announcements, I would love to give a heartfelt shout out to the USS Sally Ride Auxiliary Crew, our Discord chat. Um, I constantly have been gushing about you guys. You have followed us uh, back when you were uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Eric's TBD RPG Discord. Um, you have followed us across time and space mm -hmm. um, through all the adventures and are now with us here in the Alpha Quadrant ready to set sail on the USS Sally Ride. And I love all of you dearly, and thank you so much for coming with us on yet another journey. We adore you and um, fully support uh, you guys, and thank you for supporting us. So, Woo! all yeah. right. So everyone Who's who's been waiting for this show is waiting for us to shut the hell up with the <laughs> shout outs and get on with the game. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, it's been some time since your last mission. 
Now, if you remember correctly, your last mission was a bit of a rough spot for the USS Sally Ride. Um, the Sally Ride has only been an, on, underway for about a year now. Um, your first real spout of excitement came not too long ago, um, a few months ago really, when you all encountered a situation with the nebula, if you remember correctly. Then for those of you watching at home, um, this would be episode zero, one of our test games. Um, we've decided to canonize it and make it part of the story arc. So that's what we'll be picking up today. Um, that was a rough ride for this USS Sally ride. Um, <coughs> you guys lost your crew member. Um, if you remember correctly, your chief engineer. Um, who was, yeah, Zadis. Lieutenant Commander Lynn Zadis, the Bolian engineer who had set sail with you and was part of the ceremony and the launch crew your first chief engineer, um, and also a very popular member of the crew, especially in the galley. Um, Bolian's, of course, known for being jovial and friendly folk. Um, Zadis was particularly kind and a very good chief engineer. Um, the, his death at the hands of the Orion crime syndicate boss really shook the crew. Um, Captain Martinez, it's taken, it's ta it took a bit of time to kind of things to feel a little normal again, but the crew keeping them busy, keeping them pushing forward has actually been very therapeutic. Um, Doctor, you two have been kind of monitoring the way the crew has gone because you all know you're in Starfleet. This will not be the last time you lose someone under your command. This is not gonna be the last time you lose a friend. You have all chosen an exciting and dangerous path. Deep space exploration is not for the faint at heart and you were all given a pretty harsh lesson that last mission. Um, right now, you have all been ordered to Starbase 138 for crew transfers and uh, a few days of downtime. And we start the game now with you, Captain Martinez, stepping onto the bridge, the Intrepid class USS Sally Ride stepping off the turbo lift and moving towards the center chair. Up on the main view screen is Starbase 138. Starbase 138 is still under construction. So as you're looking out into the main view screen, you see a great behemoth of a star base that looks skeletal, half skeletal. And all these glittering sparks um, contrast against a vast star field behind it. Um, all these little sparks of uh, engineers constructing, welding, and placing together what's going to be, in the next few years, one of the big star bases here in the quadrant. But right now, it's little more than just a way station for starships to come get resupplied if they need to, do crew transfers if necessary, and then be on their way. Um, there aren't a lot of amenities here for crews that are looking for some shore leave, unfortunately. Um, but it is well enough off that you guys can sort of find a bit of a relief if you decide to uh, disembark from the Sally Ride. Um, it's been about three weeks since you guys have docked at a Federation station, so it's gonna be kind of nice to set your foot on new deck plates and uh, maybe catch the news of what's going on. Now, to give uh, our audience home, at home, uh, and to remind the crew, right now, uh, out of character, I'll tell you that we are in what would be late season three, early season four of the Deep Space Nine era. So what has occurred in the galaxy right now in the timeline is the Federation has encountered a brand new alien government on the other side of the wormhole at Deep Space Nine that calls themselves the Dominion. First contact with the Dominion did not go well. The USS Odyssey was lost in the encounter. To put that in perspective, the USS Odyssey is a galaxy-class starship. It is the juggernaut of the Federation fleet. A galaxy-class starship has not been lost since the Battle of Wolf 359, and it's unthinkable that the Dominion was able to destroy one the way they did. And yet, the Odyssey was lost, and Starfleet has been on edge ever since. And essentially, since that moment of contact with the Dominion, the Federation has essentially been in a cold war. Um, relations are very chilly, <laughs> not to continue the metaphor, <laughs> but it's not, uh, there's no, there hasn't been any outright hostilities, but there is a ripple of anxiety 
that everyone has, every time you've ever had shore leave, every time you've ever gotten letters from home, it's always, people have always asked, is everything okay out there? Tell me everything's all right. Have you seen anything? Please be careful. Um, it's not being spoken a lot, at least not by the superior officers of the Federation, but the anxiety level, everyone is on alert at this point. What's up? Is there paranoia? Are people aware? Are, there, are people like mistrusting each other? What I'm, not what yet. I, not yet. No, okay. because at this stage... How aware are people of... of, of the changeling threat? Yes. Yeah. So far, the changeling threat hasn't become widespread. The Federation's okay. done a really good job at keeping that quiet because they know what's going to happen mm -hmm. when more people find out. Mm -hmm. The changeling threat is only just now sort of getting a little bit of traction. Starfleet's just becoming aware of the magnitude of, of what the, Im the implications right. of having a government, an alien government that could be hostile towards the Federation, they're getting an idea of what the implications of that could be if there's shape changes among them. Mm -hmm. To also put this in perspective, something that happened not too long ago in this timeline, and my writers were very, were very right to point this out, the Enterprise D has just been lost. Mm -hmm. um, Captain Kirk was discovered and then lost as well which sent ripples through uh, both historians and the Federation. Um, that happened not too long ago, which of course probably has a significant impact on Captain Martinez, who Absolutely. idolizes Kirk. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Another thing that happened is your sister ship, the USS Voyager, on her maiden voyage has gone missing. And there has been no sign or word. It's just vanished. Um, and I believe, Ensign Lark, you actually were at the academy with somebody who served, I believe his name was... Ensign Kim. Ensign Kim? Yes. Your character was actually... Uh, we were in band together. <laughs> I, played, I played the trombone, he played the clarinet. Um, we, I guess we had coffee once. He thought it was a date. I didn't know that. <laughs> but, ooh, whoopsie doodle. Uh, that, that does sound like It was like really Harry awkward, Kim, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, news of Voyager's disappearance has also been a little bit of a hit to morale, but it's also kind of cast a lot of eyes on the other Intrepid-class starships that are out there. The Intrepid-class starship, for the moment, is the most advanced starship in the fleet. The USS Sovereign is currently almost finished construction. So Sovereign-class starships are going to start rolling off the line pretty soon. And while you guys haven't heard specs about the Sovereign-class, there has been a lot of talk that they basically took what worked on the Intrepid and upgraded that into a ship that's even larger than the Galaxy class. So there's a lot of excitement coming about through Star, uh, Starfleet Engineering Corps about the, the Sovereign class, but they're keeping it kind of under wraps. Um, other ships of the line, just to, to give you some idea, other ships have come into commission re recently. Um, the Akira class and the Steam Runner class came into commission after the Borg threat. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Starfleet was not in the habit of making warships. But after Wolf 359, that changed. Wolf 359 has changed everything for Starfleet. And now all of a sudden the scientific uh, mission that you guys all signed up for when you became crew members on the USS LA ride has started to slightly alter. And while no one has spoken up about it, it's made some people uncomfortable, but also conflicted. Um, news has just rolled out of the pipe too that apparently the USS Defiant is being taken out of mothballs after the um, what's happened to uh, with the, with the news of the destruction of the Odyssey. Yeah. So there's a lot of movement going on right now in the Federation. Um, so it's not that big of a surprise to see as you are gliding through space towards Starbase One Three Eight that this space station it looks like production has doubled on it. Um, Martinez, as you've been looking over, you, you've been familiar with Starbase 138 because when you got your commission and became a captain, you were essentially given uh, all the information you needed for Starfleet, for Starbases in the area. 138 was not slated to be finished for another five years. At this rate, they'll be finished in a little over two years. So wow. they have, apparently Starfleet has tripled its production. And only a, a superior officer's eye would catch that. Um, to others, it might just seem like it's a testament to the ingenuity and, and endurance of Starfleet. Um, to you, it's your tactical mind. You're immediately realizing that this is a sign of yeah. anxiety and high command. Um, approaching Starbase, you hear the customary, 
USS Sally Ride, this is Starbase 138. You are cleared for docking. Thank you, 138. Um, you see uh, Ensign Lark, as you um, get the intercom call from mm -hmm. Starfleet, you see that um, Starfleet is essentially requesting uh, permission to engage tractor beam for docking procedure. Permission granted? <laughs> You're like, no! I mean, I can do it. I can do <laughs> I it. I engage warp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um... <laughs> I don't need a tractor beam. I got this, guys. <laughs> yeah. nice. So, standard issue. It's, <laughs> yeah, this is probably, I imagine this is probably your least insulting. favorite part about being a helmswoman yeah. is that every time you go into a star base, it's standard issue. Tractor beam um, is activated and you guys are guided into the spaceport. I mean, it's pretty much an autopilot now. Yeah, I just, kind of just lean back I'll and enjoy the ride. It. I'll go get a cream soda and get it. <laughs> fine. Just look at it like the beginning of your shore leave. Ensign. It's the beginning of your vacation. Yes, Captain. Your vacation started a little bit earlier than everybody else's. <laughs> I like that, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> sure enough. That's one way to think of it. Um, we'll say the, uh, the turbo lift doors open and uh, Dr. Throlo, you walk onto the bridge. Always a fan of, of uh, joining your crew, your senior officers, when you're pulling into a star base to see what the, what the skinny is as you look on the view screen. Uh, um, you do see, in fact, that there are a couple of ships docked here. Um, there's not too many spaces uh, available that could accommodate a lot of the ships, but there is an Akira class and a Galaxy class starship uh, docked here. Um, uh, and it looks like uh, the Galaxy class is undergoing a refit. Hmm. So as you pull into the dock, you get confirmation that uh, moorings have been established and <laughs> yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to Starbase 138. Cool. You hear the ambient sounds on the hull as the starship successfully and elegantly docks with Starbase 138. Fantastic. And you get confirmation that everything is set in order. Um, and at about that point, um, the bridge doors slide open. And in steps Lieutenant Courtney James your chief engineer, um, technically Lieutenant Commander Courtney James. Huh. Um, as a quick recap to give you, the audience at home, an idea of who this MPC is, uh, Lieutenant Courtney James took command as chief engineer of the USS Sally Ride after the death of the chief engineer Zadis um, during the incident with the Orion uh, Crime Syndicate. She has performed brilliantly in the time that she has served as your chief engineer. Um, Captain Martinez, you were the one that put forward the recommendation for uh, promotion. Yes. And Starfleet cleared it in no time. Um, she steps on the bridge, um, and it doesn't take much. Um, it really doesn't take much, Rue. You've kind of come to know your chief engineer, Commander, and um, she carries herself in a way that you've always found appealing in that she's... She's very professional. She's very focused. She gets the job done. She doesn't let things get in her way. She takes orders and she keeps her bed tucked in. Like she does, she is, she is to the letter. Like she dots her I's and crosses her T's. Um, even so, as the Sally Ride clears and completes its docking procedure, you, and probably only you, because you've come to know her control so well, notice that she looks a little emotional as the ship comes to a stop becoming fully aware that this is her last time on board the bridge of the USS Sally Ride. Um, and some of the crew members begin to pack, immediately uh, get up and uh, get, leave their stations. My vacation started already, so <laughs> I'm good. Like, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, Lieutenant James um, steps down and says, Captain. Lieutenant Commander. That's gonna take some getting used to. I wanted to thank you again for recommending me for promotion, sir. This means a lot to me. Well, I want to thank you for doing your job, Lieutenant Commander James. You acted more than admirably, and it is all incredibly deserved. Sir, I, I just want you to know that Zadis was my mentor, sir, and I just hope that 
if you don't mind my saying so, sir, sir, I, I, I just want this to be a promotion that I earned. I understand completely, Courtney. And if I may be so bold, you absolutely did earn it. You stepped up to the plate and Lynn would have been incredibly proud of you. Thank you, well sir. Thank you. Well, clear skies, Captain. Clear skies. I reach out to shake her hand. She takes your hand and you see the jaw clench as she's doing an admirable job of holding back. And she turns to you and says, Commander, thank you. She sticks out her hand. Lieutenant Commander, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna. Do you shake her hand? I'm just going to nod because I know that she'll, she'll get it. it'll break if there's anything more and she won't want that. Okay, um, that reads to her. Yeah. So she, at first she's, Careful on that knee. What'd you say? Careful on that knee. Oh. I don't get to look after you anymore. I think my Parisi square stays are behind me. Well then. And she moves off the bridge. And that, for at least for now, this is the last time you see uh, Lieutenant Commander Courtney James. She heads out. Um, She'll be missed. We'll be lucky to get an engineer half as good as her. Yeah. Agreed. So we'll go ahead and cut to all of you disembarking from the Sally ride. And it's much like the scene in Star Trek Beyond where the crew is kind of just stepping out in mass. Um, everyone, uh, a few, no one's families are here waiting for them, obviously. Starbase 13, it's a bit remote. And like I said, it's still under construction. And when you step out into the main hallway, they haven't even laid carpet here. You can hear echoes and distant sounds of popping and grinding and, and the welding going on. Lots of overhead, like calm static and traffic going on. This place is in full production mode. Um, but there is a, uh, a commander waiting for you um, as you all disembark, the senior staff disembarks. Um, it looks like um, just looks like a liaison, probably to the captain's office here of Starbase. Um, a young woman. She approaches you, looking a little frazzled. Doesn't look like she slept in a while. She comes up holding a pad. And she says, C "Commander Martinez, sir." Uh, yeah, yes. Great. Sorry, sir. Um, it's been pretty rough here. Uh, I'm to give you this on behalf of the captain of the station, and she hands you a pad. Uh, it is from, let me flip to it in this huge folder I have of NPCs. <laughs> this won't be as bad as Doctor Who where I have to like manage like five NPCs at once. <laughs> um, as she hands it over, I'll just catch her sleeve a little bit. You catch her sleeve? Just, you know, as she's handing it over, just... Okay. Captain Martinez, keep an eye on it. Um, she says, did I not say Captain? I'm sorry, <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Um, thank you, Commander. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my apologies. Uh, Commander Vidak of, uh, of Starbase 138 would like to see you in his office at your convenience. Certainly. Sure. Excuse me. And she moves on. You see she's actually carrying a few pads in her, in her hand, data pads, as she moves off. Um, as that happens, throw a Doctor, you begin to look around and you, you are noticing that everyone here looks a little overworked. And you might start realizing at this point what Captain Martinez probably realized when he was looking on the view screen. They're being pushed to get this Starblaze completed. It looks like everyone's really working their butts off. It doesn't look like anyone's complaining. It just looks like everyone's pulling double duty here. Um, and that's apparent to you too, Talon. Um, looking around all the species and races that are sitting here like hammering this place together, your scientific mind is able to put plus, you know, you're able to put one and one together to figure out that they're actually in a, in a mad rush to finish the Starbase. Essentially, the what I'm trying to communicate is you're all picking up on the fact that this place, it really, this is like, this is like a dorm room a day before exams. <laughs> this, is, this place is in just override mode and everyone looks like they're being worked to the bone. And aside from that, you are now free to wander the starbase as you see fit. Well, Commander Rue, do you think they're getting enough sleep around here? I think they're getting 
the amount of sleep they can get to do what they need to do. You're probably right, as always. <laughs> uh. Uh, well, it seems like I have somewhere that I need to be, so um, uh, dismissed. Thank you, Captain. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. I walk over to a map that's on the wall and look for the cafeteria because I did not eat breakfast. Ah, I would say that it's not difficult to find. Um, <laughs> when you walk over to the wall, you see it's one of those walls, like, for example, on the Enterprise, where they have just a wall with a computer sure. console. Mm -hmm. So tapping it, you immediately see a display come up, and you it's, it's just a few button pushes Perfect. before you find out where the galley is. Got it. All right, making your way. Uh, who's going where? Does this matter? Do you guys have agendas? Is or are you all just going to head? Hungry? Same thing? Um, I... Uh, I look at the console as well to see if there's an archive of any kind. There's no archive yet. It looks like right now they're actually in the middle of building one of the embassies here. Mm -hmm. There's an embassy station that's being constructed. Mm. Interesting. If uh, they're going to have an archive of any kind, it would probably be there, if not in command office. Then I proceed to, actually I'll proceed to command office to inquire about okay. an archive. Okay. Sure thing. I want to watch some of the work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The Andorian, you just kind of fold your arms behind your back and you're just kind of looking around. Um, you know, when the Federation was first established, Andorians were kind of begrudging to admit this, but the industry of human beings is both astonishing and slightly terrifying. It's a miracle this race did not exterminate itself before the 22nd century. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. There will be social commentary in Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it got um, real dicey around 2017. Real dicey. Yeah. <laughs> real dicey. Hey, we don't got do dicey around Technically, it got dicey around 1990 Ooh. in Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really familiar um, with all of that. <clears throat> uh, yes. In, in our prime timeline, it's whatever time that the band Nickelback formed. That's kind of where I start. Yeah. That's where and I then kind of Then it became like, the darkest time. Then it became, yeah. <laughs> it became the darkest Not all of human history, but Nickelback. Nickelback is what it was. <laughs> like, oh, we're in, we're in a bad place. It's yeah. like, it was like the return of the dark ages. <laughs> right, mm. right. Yeah, we all, we all <clears> felt <throat> that, sure. Yeah. Like I said, social commentary. All right. The worst of times was the best of times. Um, so yes, uh, Dr. Thrillo, you, you, again, like, these people, I mean, it's not, obviously it's not just humans that are working on the space station now, but um, yeah, you, just from giving a glance at, at a lot of the engineers and construction workers that are, that are working the station right now, um, just at a glance, with your expertise in biology and, and medicine in general, it doesn't take much for you to realize, just looking at these guys, that some of them probably haven't slept in at least a day. I admire it, but I've seen the effects of hard work before. Yeah, it's unusual, too, for Starfleet to push personnel to work longer than 24 hours like this. It's very unusual. So, that's... Who's the doctor around here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to find out, we can make that what you're doing, if you'd like to go check that out. Okay. You move off. Um... Uh, yeah, Commander Rue, what are you up to? You gonna oh. follow? You, you're actually, if you'd like to follow the captain, you, you are abs you're not sent out of bounds even though he's been summoned. You can he's follow. been summoned, I haven't. It would be redundant. I'm gonna look up the chief security officer on that Akira class. Might be a good sparring partner. <laughs> Might be a good source of information. And Sam goes looking for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sam's like, get used to it. <laughs> you're going to be like, I is there anybody around here that looks like they could bleed? Talking to people from has... other ships <laughs> probably know the CSO of an Akira class. <laughs> okay. Worth looking them up. All right, cool. Um, all right, so everyone kind of scatters throughout the Starbase to get, you, get a good look at what Starbase 138 is going to become in the next few years. It's a good chance that since y'all are kind of stationed out this far, that you're probably going to be visiting Starbase 138 more than a few times. So you'll get to watch the evolution um, of the Starbase as it happens. And you'll probably get to know some of the personnel as it comes through. Hmm. Um, Captain, you find yourself in front of the uh, commanding officer's uh, office. 
the liaison, uh, the woman who handed you the pad, is actually waiting and somehow managed to make it back <laughs> before you did. Um, Are there still you, pads in her hand, or did she just No, there's no more pads in her hand, yeah. yeah. Um, as you enter the office, she's actually, it looks like she's trying to catch her breath as she sits down, and you walk in, she says, oh, Captain, she stands up. That's right, I'm sorry, sir, I forgot you were coming. I, I should have just escorted you, I apologize. No, it's fine, it looks like uh, you had other tasks to attend to, and you did that, so. Thank you, fine. sir, yes. Uh, yes, sir, yes. I think I did, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Captain will see you. At Thank you. Um, when you walk into the office, the captain's office is relatively small, but it does have an entire, the entire back wall is, a, is a, uh, essentially glass mm -hmm. looking out over the space dock. It kind of reminds you of the Admiral's office back on Starbase One. Mm. Um, <laughs> Sam makes the a disdainful expression. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't know what you're, what talking, you're about. talking about. Um, <laughs> so as you, step into, uh, as you step into the captain's office, you see uh, acting captain, or I'm sorry, the uh, commander's office, he is the captain of the Starbase, but his official rank is commander. He is Commander Vidak, a Vulcan. Um, looks like, a, obviously, operations. He wears the mustard gold. Mm -hmm. um, he Let turns, me take a guess. V apostrophe D-A-K? No, but that's, that's what it is now, because that's, that's that actually way more Vulcan-y. That's, yeah. that's what I wrote. <laughs> that's okay. what I wrote, too. Let's check in Excellent. with our Vulcan. Hey, well, what, what, what did you write? I actually, I actually wrote V-I-D-A-K. That's me. actually I, what that's I That's what I did. Okay. That was my second guess. Oh, but I think either is acceptable. It's a transliteration, isn't it? So yeah. I think going from alphabet actually, I think V apostrophe D-A-K is actually a lot more Vulcan-y. So, sure. I don't sure. know. They're both. Mm -hmm. You could ask him. Just a sidebar, my name Hector is in Spanish has an accent over the E, so it's just like the same, you know, yeah. yeah. My name Eric has been converted exactly. from Gaelic and, I and Viking so many times. Yeah. I'm not Eric with a K, But I God's bet, sake. But I bet you at one point. I was, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's the H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> anyway, um, so yeah, walking in, um, you see the Vulcan, his desk is <coughs> piled with data pads. Mm but meticulously categorized and stacked. Of course. Um, of course. Um, as you step in, he turns and looks at you. And despite his bearing, which is typical of a Vulcan, standing upright and very respectful, you can see in his eyes that he too probably has not gotten a lot of sleep this wow. past week. Wow. Um, okay, now it's serious. <laughs> yeah. Now it's serious. You've seen a sleepy yeah. Vulcan. If I'm what the hell is going on? a sleepy Vulcan? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. we are on red alert. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Security. Okay. Um, oh, dear. Uh, so yeah, Commander. Uh, he turns and looks at you and says, Ah, Captain. Commander. I appreciate you reporting to the office so soon. I realize you only just disembarked. I had nothing better to do. <laughs> I understand. There's not much going on in the sector, as you might say. Sure. That's two. It's actually three. Three, three snort yeah, laughs? I don't know. Right, it's keep three. a tally. Yeah. Man, they come and go, you know? <laughs> I hold them back, they come out. Yeah. Nope, yeah. let them fly. Um, allergies. It's what allergies, you, what are you, gonna do? you guys. Yeah. Um, He's going to go. He, uh, he, take, he says, please sit down. Can may I get you anything to drink? Uh, some water would be fine. Yeah, thank you. Computer. And you hear it. And he says, uh, water, 10 degrees Celsius. And you see. <laughs> And the Vulcan just... You know, it, on second thought, it's not... If it, it's too much trouble, it's fine. Um. The, the doc turns and looks at you and says, My apologies, Captain. We've been having difficulties this morning. Not at all. He sits down in the chair and says, As you might have noticed, this starbase is pushing its limits in productivity. Orders coming in from Starfleet has made it very difficult to meet the deadlines that they have been pushing for. However, I believe that their concerns are valid. That being said, I've been ordered to assign you personnel. I believe you are in need of a chief engineer. That is correct, yes. Thank you, Commander. He flips through his data pads and says, Ah, yes. While his technical expertise is highly valued around here, I think perhaps he would be best suited somewhere else. And he hands you a data pad with a personnel file. It says, Lieutenant Commander Veth Ziv. V-E-T-H. Wait. V-E-T-H. There's no apostrophe. Right, second name Z-I-V. Close, there's an H. 
It's a silent H. Z. Which is ridiculous. I H V. Z H I V. Oh, oh yep. Ziv. It, ooh, Ziv. Ziv. That's that's better way. Yeah. Fancy. Ziv. 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 Lieutenant Commander Veth Ziv. 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 I like Lieutenant that. Commander. Veth is Ziv. 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 Lieutenant Commander Ziv. Ziv. I like that. Veth is of course Ziv. short for uh, for Bethany, right? <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> nope. Oh, He's a Tellerite. It's just Veth. Tellerite. Um, Captain, just looking at this personnel file, there's some discrepancies you're already noticing. What are these discrepancies? <laughs> what am I looking at? How much like, can I scan? How much of this can I scan while still being attentive to, uh, to Commander Vidak right now? Um, well, just off the top of your head, I mean, just off quick just glance. From glancing quick at glance. It. First of all, he's a veteran of Starfleet. He's served Fantastic. in Starfleet for over 20 years. He's got a hell of a, a, mm. a record. Um, you see there was a reprimand on his record and he was demoted some time ago to lieutenant commander. He was originally a commander. Ooh. Um, okay. Ooh. Uh, and he is now, uh, you also note that he served on the project that helped, he was part of the crew at the Utopia Pelanesia shipyards that helped design the warp cores now used on the Intrepid class starship. Ooh. Wow. So he so he's got some knowledge. So yeah, so yeah. he knows the warp core in the belly of the Sally Ride like nobody else. You can tell just by looking at the personnel file. And what was right. his race again? I'm sorry. Tellerite. Tellerite. That's what I. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make Tellerite. sure. Tellerite. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you right. <laughs> Tellerites. Okay. They love to argue, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tellerites love to argue. Stunner. They are very hot-headed. Mm -hmm. um, people, D and D pe people who play Dungeons and Dragons love to love to call them space dwarves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, because they are, yeah. <laughs> um, I thought my family was bad. Yeah, <laughs> I thought my family was bad. Yeah, that's uh, that's a reference to the Dungeons and Dragons race, of course. So. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, yes, Tellerites are known for being argumentative and hot-headed, and uh, they make very challenging diplomats. However, they make very strong, um, they're, they're typically a Tellerite officer. It's not unusual. The way you might look at a Vulcan and think, ah, logic. Mm -hmm. A Tellerite, they're known for carrying themselves with integrity. Yes. And being very honest. Yes. Sometimes too honest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, this lieutenant commander looks like he's only about a year away from retirement. Hmm. And that's something that I notice in this quick glance. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's up for retirement in the next year. Okay. And your, your instinct, Captain, just from looking at this personnel file, if you didn't know any better, you'd think someone was dumping him on you. <laughs> commander, like somebody I was trying to get rid of him. Commander, I couldn't help but notice that... Um, Lieutenant Commander Ziv here is about a year away from retirement. Surely there's somebody else who could potentially be transferred the, for a longer period of time? I'm sure that's true, Captain. There is no one currently on board Starbase 138 that has been cleared for transfer, however. That's too bad. I understand. If you manage to tolerate this engineer for a year, I'm sure Starfleet will be willing to grant any request for any engineer you see fit. <laughs> I'll take that deal. Fantastic. <laughs> Rue's like, oh, we'll tolerate him. <laughs> Don't worry. Any engineer? He's gonna fall in line. Any, enge any engineer? <laughs> that is a sweet deal. <laughs> <laughs> he says, by the way, you'll be happy to know that your former engineer, uh, your I believe her name, Lieutenant Courtney James, now Lieutenant Commander Courtney James? Yes. Has been assigned to the USS Thunderchild as Chief Engineer. That's fantastic. <clears throat> I thought that might please you. Indeed it does. The Thunderchild, you say? The Akira class, currently docked here in Space Dock. Ah, that's good. Well, she deserved it, and I'm sure that she's going to do a fantastic job. I trust she will. She seemed to be a most competent officer. I would agree. I won't take up any more of your time, Captain. If you need anything, please let me know, or my li liaison officer. The feeling is mutual. Thank you, sir. 
he hands you one last pad and says, if you so choose, we do have quarters available to your crew. And I've enjoy your stay on Starbase 138. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you walk out of the office. You have never seen a Starbase so cobbled. You've never seen a Starbase staff so haggard. Mm -hmm. It just seems like everything around here, it just doesn't seem normal for you at all. And it's definitely a testament to the state of things. And looking down at this personnel file of this Tellarite, you can't help but feel like maybe the Sally Ride isn't a priority for Starfleet right now. Mm which is definitely a change of tone since you guys launched from Starbase yeah. on your scientific mission a year ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and cut to the galley. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, Lark, you are sitting in front of a glass of cream soda that does not really... It, it's flat, something's it's wrong. It's not tasting so good. Mm -mm. Um, this cream soda clearly has been having some issues with the replicators. It's it didn't win the fight when it was replicated. It lost that fight. <laughs> mm. It replicated into something else. I'm not pleased. No, as you kind of push it away, um, at about that point, who would like to enter into the galley at this point? Does anybody want to interject here? Otherwise, I'm gonna... Um, actually, you know what, Captain, if you want, we can say that this is just a few minutes later if you would like to come in here if you'd like. Sure. Sure. Yeah, So Great. It's about like 20 minutes after your meeting. Stepping into the galley, you see your ensign sitting across the room at one of the tables. Um, the galley here looks like it's one of the few places it's actually been constructed and completed. So as a result, there's a lot of personnel here using this place for what would probably be, normally would be downtime. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them looks like they're using it just as a waypoint to rest before they have to get up and go back to work. Um, and the wait staff here um, is on their feet constantly. Um, you see your captain moving across the room and he comes and sits down at your table. Mm. Ensign? Captain? Hello, Captain. Uh, uh, may I suggest not ordering a cream soda? Uh, it's, there's something not quite right with the replicators. I'm really? not quite sure. Actually, I don't know who I could speak to, but I bet you I could lend a hand and, and fix a few of the problems. It's May bad, I? Captain. May I? May I take a sip? Sure. Can I try it out? Mm hmm By all means. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> and you know I'm not picky about my cream soda. It, this is bad. Grass? I get it. I'm getting a hint of grass. Mm hmm <laughs> I mean, I like earthy things just as much right. as the next person, but It this, tastes healthy. Mm, healthy. At least. Yeah, the uh -huh. doc would approve. Well, Ensign, I'm sure that uh, that uh, Starbase 138 could probably use all of the extra hands it could get, so. I'm getting that feeling, Captain. Yeah. Everyone seems extremely exhausted I haven't the word I would use. Ensign, I haven't brought this up to the rest of the crew yet. It just came from the commander's quarters. Uh, there are living quarters available to the, our crew, if we so desire. Um, but uh, the more that I'm looking around, the more I'm feeling like we might just want to stay out of everyone's hair. Does that make sense? I agree, Captain. Or, what do you think? Or if, if we do end up staying for a few days, I feel like maybe we should uh, get some of our crew to lend a hand, e even if it's just for you know some minor things. I, for one, would bring cream soda from the ship Okay, that's Here. not necessary. Oh, okay. so, sorry, not. Sorry, they're probably. I'm just fine. saying we can create a convoy. If, we'll get all the instants <laughs> together. We'll just we'll leave. make a line and assemble line. If you can't of fix it here and you're craving your cream soda, you can just head to the ship. It's there. True. It's fine. I'm saying I could bring some with me if we decide to stay in quarters here. I would much rather do that instead of replicating. Ensign, I've said it before, and I'll probably say it again. Nobody in the universe likes cream soda as much as you do. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> it is. Good. It is. Yeah. <laughs> that's going on your permanent record yeah. under accommodations. Yes. I think it's under my health profile. Yeah, oh asterisk. <laughs> Nobody likes cream soda as much as Ensign Sage. It's very true, Captain. Yeah. Um, especially with it, just a little bit of... It, not important. Uh, what is important is if we do decide to stay uh, on the space station, Captain, I would suggest maybe lending a hand yeah. for a few days. Seems like a really good idea. I feel Ensign. like I don't really need 
the rest as much as they do, so I'm willing to help. Agreed. Okay. So we're gonna, so as you guys are continue your conversation in this exhausted galley, um, we cut to our doctor as she steps into the med bay. The, uh, as you step into the med bay, the doors open. Um, again, you see uh, people running around. You see a couple of people in med beds um, with work-related injuries. Nothing looks too serious. But what you do notice right off the top of your head, doctor, is that on top of the staff running around and treating people, you see what's clearly the chief medical officer a, uh, a woman named Ash, uh, according to your doc, your, uh, the, the profile, her name is Dr. Ashley Crane. Um, you also see the EMH has been activated and is working. Um, this is the first time you've seen an EMH not on board an Intrepid class starship. So mm. clearly the technology has begun to expand a little bit, but it's really unusual to see an EMH working alongside the nurse staff and the medical staff. Um, at the same time, usually it's a last resort sort of deal, but it looks like they're overburdened with treating burns and all sorts of, you, what, the first thing you notice too, as you walk in, is you see a couple of crew members, it looks like they're just huddled over. Um, and walking in, kind of glancing down, they just kind of look up at you, and even though they see your rank, it doesn't look like they even have the strength to acknowledge, they just kind of, it's... You know what it reminds you of as you're walking through? And for a split second, you sort of have a flashback, but you almost envision yourself walking past miners who are looking up at you. Their faces just smeared with soot, um, worked past the point of exhaustion. And as you step into the med bay for a split second, you're back on that mining colony um, until you notice the doctor, Crane, turns around and sees you and stops and says, Yes? Are you the relief? I am now, Dr. Thurlusha Shiros. Many picks make a bigger dent in the ice. Great. Um, could you help over there, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, moving uh, to the so right good. of the med bay, you step up to a medical bed where you see um, a young Bolian woman who's just laying, on the gr uh, laying back with her eyes closed and she's just, looks like she's taking deep breaths. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything physically wrong with her, but you can note the signs of exhaustion. Um, and as you're looking down at her, your instinct is you see the medical tricorder laying to your left. Um, if you want to go ahead and, Amy, give us the first roll of the game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god. Yeah. It's you're the first roll the of the game. You're popping the dice cherry. Oh, get us some. <laughs> The first innuendo of the game, <laughs> everybody. Okay. So let's also walk our audience through this. Okay. Yes. You guys have been sitting tight through a lot of narrative and now you're watching the dice get rolled. So let's go ahead this and talk into this. Because anybody who's played D and D, this dice system is gonna blow your damn mind. So just be patient and get ready for this, okay? So you are going to roll two D twenty. Okay. Ones are good, 20s are bad. What? What? Ones oh. are good, 20s are bad. It's like opposite day at school. Everyone right now is like, oh my God, Will Wheaton would be amazing at this game. <laughs> no, um, he actually rolls high in those systems. We've seen it before. Oh, is it true? <laughs> he rolls high. Yeah, he sucks all the time. We've seen it. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, he'll well. always suck. Well, all right. <laughs> good, good, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Sally oh, well. ride safety. <laughs> should be should be an annotation. Never allow Will Wheaton on board the Sally ride for the yeah, safety of the crew. Yeah. Um, he can play uh, against us. Right? Yeah. yeah. On the other yeah. hand, yeah, you okay. never know. Um, Kill him in one roll, like oops, he did. Um, so uh, you're gonna take so two d twenty. Um, you're gonna be, be making a reason. Uh, I believe it's medicine. Reason medicine? That's my best Reason check. medicine check. So what is your reason? My reason is uh, a 12. A 12, which is max. maximum that we can have in our current uh, configuration, and you can only have one 12. Uh, and my medicine, uh, my discipline of medicine is five, Ooh. also the max at our level. You are very good at what you do. So 12 plus five is 17. So on those 2d20, you need to roll a 17 or lower because you're that good at what you do. If you roll a one, it's a critical success. It'll count as two successes. Mm -hmm. Now the way this works is this game follows uh, much like Doctor Who and people who are familiar with like the White Wolf system or maybe even the Vast system where they use, I believe, 
Um, Vast uses difficulty settings as well. So like a difficulty of three, you roll a number of dice and hope to get that many successes after hitting a target number. In this game, um, I'll say you need three successes. That would be difficult, not in this roll, but for, as an example. No. Amy would need to roll those 2d20, and if she rolled a 17 or lower, it's a success for each time she rolled 17 or lower, but she's only got two dice. However, if she rolls a one, that one will count as two successes. Mm. But what focuses do you have as a doctor? All right, I've got emergency medicine. This might not count. Mm, what else do you have? I've got xenobiology. Uh, I, would, I would say xenobiology would count. This is a Boolean. Mm. You could uh, check that out. So, because I'm letting Amy use one of her focuses, which is basically a specialization, it means she has an increased chance of critical success. It allows her to use her medicine roll, her medicine stat, which is five, as the threshold for critical success. So originally, it would be one that gives you two successes. But now, since her focus is applied, if Amy rolls a five or lower, she gets a critical success. What, what? So go ahead and roll 2d20. Five or lower is a critical success. 20 is a complication. What's the difficulty? The difficulty is going to be one. You need one success. You got this. All right, doctor. Come on, doctor. We'll probably have to do a, a video on like Facebook or the, on the Geek and Sundry mm -hmm. page or something that we sure. can just sort of explain Ooh, this like for anybody that. who wants to get a walkthrough. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. All right. But it's Watching pretty easy closely. once you get done. I don't know if y'all can see my dice, but I, I promise to be honest. I believe you. I believe you. She's a doctor. She took an oath. I, I have a talent called Proud and Honorable. It's an Andorian thing. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Andorian things. Uh-oh. What's that look? <laughs> okay. Uh, one of them's a 19. Okay. <laughs> so nothing but no complication. Um, and the other one is a 9. Mm -hmm. So I have my exactly one success. You have one success. All right. Mm -hmm. Doctor, you fold open the medical tricorder, and as you start <laughs> running, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that would have been bad. I'm here to help. Ow! <laughs> bam! <laughs> Jeez, get you off the page. and jam the tricorder into the bullion's head. Did I open the ice too literally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Don't worry, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Our doctor's murdered again. You accidentally again. picked we a laser scalpel instead of the tricorder. <laughs> Let me just like, scan oh, you. I'm sorry. Um, you were just sleeping. Now you're, now you're Um, she's fine. She's doing just fine. She's just resting. I'll be on my way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so you pick up the uh, tricorder and running a quick scan, this bullion is suffering from exhaustion. Mm. Probably hasn't been eating properly and that may be an indication of not getting proper breaks or not getting proper meals. The um, obviously, yeah, obviously um, has not slept very much, but she's suffering from mild, what would, what would basically translate to bullions. She's suffering from mild dehydration as well. Not, has been basically overworked to the point of dehydration. And as you finish the scan, you hear, what are you doing? Scanning your patient. You look up into the face of a very severe looking bald man in a uniform with no rank. And he says, this is my patient. And where are you from? I don't recall seeing you part of the medical staff. You're not as nice as mine. <laughs> nice as yours. Dr. Thorlo Shishiros, Chief Medical Officer of the USS Sally Ride. Oh, I see. You're one of those starship doctors. <laughs> well, as you can see, this patient is well underhand, so you can move along your way. Were I'm you going to explain to this patient how badly they need to get some rest? Very well. He leans down. Get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> She's being treated. You may move on if you wish, doctor. What can I do? You see, he kind of, his programming refusing to allow him to deny you. <laughs> he just says, you can pass me that. And he points to one of the um, hyposprays. I'll pass him a hypospray. He injects her and she kind of, oh, thank you. Why are you arguing again? Her What's eyes aren't the last time you got some sleep? Um, she opens her eyes and says, um, Yes, that's too much pause. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, I, I, had, I had hours. I didn't log enough hours the day before yesterday. Dr. Crane? Um, Crane, she walks over and says, yes. What's happening to these people? <sighs> Starfleet sent down some pretty tight deadlines. We're trying to get them in under the, before the week is over. Don't worry, things will finally calm down after we hit 
week's end. But for now, this is the most common treatment I've got going at the moment. Everyone's exhausted. You know, if you're willing to stick around, it would be great to have another doctor helping us. Of course. And what about me? Oh, sorry. Uh, computer, disengage EMH. And you see him look at you and go, This <laughs> 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 is, we, we system resources are already strained. If they can use that energy to go to the replicator, all the better. Besides, he was pissing me off. And What's wrong with the replicators? They're not working too well. I don't know if you've tried the cream soda lately. She <laughs> moves across the... <laughs> That's funny. Um, as you move to help the next patient, we cut to Talon. Um, Talon, you've reached one of the lower decks where the ambassador, the embassy is being built. Um, this embassy is actually one of the embassies, uh, the Betazoid embassies. It looks like mm -hmm. it's still being finished. Um, and by finished, I mean furnished. Um, for the most part, the bulkheads and everything around here is complete. But you see a lot of engineers doing um, maintenance work and it looks like an apartment that hasn't been moved into yet. But it does have the information listed outside that this is the Betazoid Embassy for Starbase 138. Mm -hmm. Also outside the embassy is a very handsome young man in what is clearly Ambassador's robes um, and the uh, sign of the office. And he's talking to an engineer. <laughs> what does that look, Sam? <laughs> what a spot. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, and he's talking to one of the engineers. Um, as you approach, he turns and looks at you and, um, and nods to the engineer. As the engineer begins to walk away, he says, Hello, I take it you're here for the upgrade? Uh, I am not aware of any upgrades. My ship is here to be assigned a chief engineer. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if you've looked around lately, but Starfleet isn't exactly equipped the Starbase to function properly yet, and the embassy doesn't even have communications up right now. Ah, uh, yes. I do not come here in an official capacity. I merely was inquiring to see if there were any archives being built or anything that I could peruse in my downtime. Oh, um, uh, I have, well, I have archives from my homeworld <laughs> with me, but that's about all that's available to me right now. I can't actually access a, a Federation database in the, in the embassy right now, unfortunately. Oh. But you're, you're, of course, welcome to use my personal computer if you'd like to research more on Beta Z. Are you the ambassador from Beta Z? I am, yes. Ambassador Rell. Ambassador Rell. And you are? I am Lieutenant Commander Talan. I am the Chief Science Officer of the USS Sally Ride. I've heard of the Sally Ride. She's one of the new Intrepid class starships, isn't that correct? Yes, exactly. We are a top of the line science vessel. I have to say, I, I've heard that the Intrepid class is one of the fastest starships ever built. Is that true? Yes, we have not had many chances to test its speed. We've had one, but it's been a year. Interesting. To be honest, it's been a bit of a slow year, and so any reading or any type of scientific study that you may have to share from your planet, Beta Z, would be very intriguing for me. Well, you're of course more than welcome to come use the computer. I don't know what we're going to have that you probably don't have on board one of the most advanced starships in the fleet, but uh, if you're willing to make conversation, I'd love to learn more about the Intrepid class. I, I, uh, I'm fascinated with ships, <laughs> essentially. Oh. Uh, if you don't mind my saying, I have a huge collection of, uh, of uh, model ships. Uh, I collect uh, beta, uh, Betazoid, of course, but also Bajoran. I don't know if you're aware, but Bajoran ships, some of the first early Bajorans had space flight thousands of years before anybody else did. Um, Earth ships are fascinating, the way they were able to actually sail upon uh, rough seas. Uh, it, it's, it's a miracle that they weren't destroyed. Um, I have a whole archive uh, of ship databases if you'd, like to, if you'd like to avail yourself to that. I would indeed. Oh, well, please come in. Um, it, there's not anywhere to sit, but I have a great computer set up. <laughs> Wonderful. I do not need to sit in order to study. I can study standing. Great. Please. And I would be very excited to hear about how boring your time has been because 
I miss that right about now. It seems that things are a bit in disarray at the Starbase. They are. Uh, I don't know what you've heard being out in space and all, but um, everyone's a little jumpy these past few months. I have heard about some troubles that the Federation has encountered with the Dominion. Yes, they are not telling us much. Starfleet Intelligence has been keeping that pretty tight under wrap. Most of the intel is coming through Deep Space Nine, but we don't hear too much of what's going on in that part of the quadrant. I've learned not to ask. Are you a new ambassador? It shows, I, doesn't it? I only ask because <laughs> it, it shows. seems no, that you, I understand. Are, you it are afraid to challenge authority, and that is typical for people who are new in their rank. Would you say that it's normal for a veteran ambassador to challenge authority? Well, I believe if a veteran ambassador disagreed with something or needed more information, they would not be afraid to ask. And you seem afraid to ask for the information that you seek. That's probably true. I, when I enjoyed the Ambassador Corps, at Starfleet Command when I went through my initial training after Betazoid. Uh, I was really hoping I'd be assigned somewhere else. <laughs> and I didn't know I was going to be assigned to, you know, this, which is essentially a shack in space. But I know it'll be something to marvel at eventually, but uh, I haven't slept in a bed in about two months. So it's been an interesting ride as an ambassador when I don't even have any fellow ambassadors to discuss anything with. I'm not sure what my purpose is here. Mm. And I can't help but feel like maybe Starfleet kind of, I feel like my government and Starfleet kind of conspired against me to get me to come out here, if that makes any sense. I mean, I know it sounds like maybe I'm complaining, but I feel like I meant more than, I meant for more than this. Ambassador Rell, I do not doubt that you have ambition and you have potential. But to say that someone is conspiring against you, that is not logical. What but is likely is that there were others who maybe were chosen for other stations and you were chosen for this one because of your particular set of skills. I encourage you to seek the logic so that your, your perception of conspiring or being moved against is diminished. So you don't think there was a huge plot at Starfleet Command to dispatch me to some broken end of space to sleep on the floor for two months? <laughs> you seem paranoid. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, I'm just buying Lay the off my ensign. Uh, lay off, <laughs> leave the ensign alone. Sort of Picking on her's my <laughs> job. The <laughs> um, he nods and says, "You're right. I I, I know. I'm. Uh, I think I'm just a little. What do the humans call it? Uh, you seem exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exhaust. Cabin fever. That's what they call it. Uh, the feeling of being trapped or enclosed or not getting out enough." Yes. There's not a holodeck working on this starbase yet. So you're looking at people and rotation cycles that have not moved through any kind of relaxation period in a long time. I happen to know for a fact that the, the medical facilities here have been taxed because of this. Mm. Well, I am not sure how I can help. Well, we can start by studying, I guess. I enjoy studying. Right this way. And he leads you in. Um, as he leads you in, we cut to Commander Ru. <laughs> as you move through the hallway, uh, approaching um, the bay of the USS Thunderchild, which is currently docked. Um, it didn't take long for you to see in the personnel file that the Thunderchild is actually getting ready to depart in the next six hours. Um, so its crew is already on board, but they are still filtering in and out of the star base as preparations are made and energy uh, crew transfers and whatnot are taking place. Um, 
And uh, as you're approaching the docking bay, uh, standing outside the docking bay is Chief Security Officer Dodd Voslo. Can I get a spelling? D O D V O S L O. Dodd Voslo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dodd Voslo is uh, another Bullion. And um, you know him. As you're approaching, at first you weren't sure the personnel file, you couldn't believe your eyes when you spotted it. But Voslo served on board the same ship you did. About four years ago, was it? You haven't seen many crew members since then, because not a lot of you made it out alive. But upon the side of Dodd, there's a moment is that it's not a moment of, it's not, I wouldn't call it a, a moment of like shock seeing him, but there is a sense of relief, like, like it's, it's one more tiny victory seeing him standing there. Um, and he's going through a data pad. You see he still has the plasma burn on the left side of his head. Um, but you also see that just like you remember him, Voslo, even being for, even as a bullion, Voslo was not the typical jovial bullion. It's one of the reasons why you two actually managed to banter so well. Um, but as you approach him, he just looks up from his data pad and he goes, Commander. And he lowers the pad. Someone approaches him and he goes, in a minute. And he walks up to you and says, it's good to see you, Commander. Oslo, good to be seen. I heard the Sally Ride had docked. I wasn't sure if I'd get a chance to see you before you took off. Before we took off. You're doing well for yourself. Doing all right. Chief of security. It's a nice change of pace. Maybe one day they'll make me ops. Who knows? I don't know. You'll get there if that's what you're looking for. I honestly don't know. But we'll see. How Once are you doing? <laughs> Do you just kind of look? Yeah. Yeah, he looks down at your crutches and he just nods. I heard you got some heat from the Admirality. Word Couldn't travels. Possibly comment. He's lucky he had those bars protecting him. Those <sighs> bars on his neck. Ah, uh, you know I'd never hit a fellow officer outside the ring. Sure. <laughs> Hey, so where are y'all heading then? I'm not sure yet. They actually have gotten into the habit of not giving us our assignment until we're underway. Listen, I'm not gonna ask you details because I know that's not what we do, but have you been hearing rumblings lately? Starfleet Command seems really nervous these days. And this Starbase looks like it's about to fall apart. Well, it looks like they're going all hours trying to hold it together with duct tape and chewing gum. Where are the reinforcements for a proper duty shift? I don't know. But if I had to guess, just from looking around, I'd say we're spread pretty thin right now. Yeah. Where's everyone heading? I'm not sure. How long have you, have you guys been here? Only for three days. And we're already taken off again, so I'm not sure what our orders are, but we didn't stick around very long. Not that there was anything to stick around for. We had people from the Starbase asking permission to come aboard to use our holodeck. A holodeck on board an Akira class. I mean, it's barely the size of a living room. I don't know what they expect, but... Hey, I would take your tactical compliment over my holodecks any day of the week. Yeah, I was going to ask you. I know the Sally Ride isn't a warship, but she's pretty fast, isn't she? Have you got any of these scrapes that you can talk about? Nothing that would mean anything to an Akira class. She's a fine science vessel. Well, I would say the Akira class is a hell of a machine, but to be honest with you, it's weird serving on board a ship you hope you never have to use. Although, after the Odyssey, I, 
I kind of hoped we were over that kind of news. Do you, have you, um, Sam, what's the name of that starship that you used to serve on? Do you have the name? Roosevelt. The Roosevelt? Yes. Um, um. He says, listen, you ever talk with anybody else in the Roosevelt? I've been on Soul 3 for years, son. I haven't seen any of the old crew for the most part. I mean, the ones I saw early days. I tried reaching out to a few of them. I don't know. Counselor told me it would be good to talk to them, you know? Kind of open up a little bit. And, you know, I never gave a damn about that kind of thing, but... Yeah. Anyway, none of them wanted to talk. I don't blame them. Well, a, if you run into the Drake, I hear uh, Harara's on there. On the Drake? Yeah, <coughs> the Drake. I used to serve there. Kind of a cushy assignment, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I don't think any of us can complain. You're doing something that's needed. Yeah, for now. Hey. Listen. I already know how you're going to react to what I'm about to say, but I got to say it because, you know, we're crewmates. But, you know, I know nobody else wants to talk, but if you ever want to, I mean, I, I could use someone. I'm not saying we have to. I'm just putting it out there. If you ever need someone to talk to about stuff. Yeah. Thanks. It's good seeing you again, Commander. Voslo? Hey. I don't want to see you on any lists, you hear? Yes, sir. Get out of here. Commander? He moves back towards the bay, um, a few people falling in line behind him. <clears throat> um, judging by the way that they respond to him, you can tell Voslo's running a tight ship. Um, you taught the guy pretty well. Um, he learned. <laughs> as he moves off, though, and things quiet down, and the companionship sort of fades as he enters that airlock towards the ship and the trans... as they're using their... Uh, not the transporter pad, but the actual docking arena. Um, the ambient sounds of the star base become uncomfortable to you. Watching him walk away, you, you, it just becomes a little uncomfortable. All the noise and sparks and the welding sounds and the intercom that's really loud and kind of talking over itself. I need to go check, make sure everyone's okay on my ship. Okay. A few hours later, Captain Martinez, you find yourself um, in what looks like one of the uh, one of the power ports here on Starbase 138, essentially one of the uh, power conduit channels. It's a junction point. This helps supply power to the entire Starbase. Okay. Um, there's a lot of engineer crew milling about. It is very clear who the Tellarite in the room is. Um, <laughs> about 20 feet up on a catwalk is a Tellarite with large bulky boots on, staying at least, that's about four, four and a half feet tall, um, broad shoulders and a big, as Eddie Izzard would say, big fuck off beard. <laughs> um, and uh, he is in the middle of, you're not sure what he's saying, but as he push, pulls down that pad, he's saying something vaguely Tellarite-ish to one of the ensigns who looks a bit horrified. And he shoves the pad back in the ensign's hands and points. And he picks up a, you, it looks like a, one of the engineering tools and slaps it in his hand and, tell, and then points again and the ensign shuffles off. Do I have to do this now? <laughs> it seems like he's busy. It seems like he's at work. <laughs> <laughs> what you see is he Great goes over in. to one of the elevators and starts coming down to the ground floor. He doesn't look like he's noticed you as he's, uh, as he's taking the elevator down to the bottom floor of the engineering deck. I'm going to stand in front of where the elevator's going to open. Okay. I'm going to put my hands behind my back. All right. Just wait there. <clears throat> it opens up and he steps out and he sees you and says, looks at your pips and goes, Captain. 
Lieutenant Commander? You see a visible reaction when you say Lieutenant Commander. And he just, oh. yes, sir. That's me, Lieutenant Commander. What can I do for you? Well, uh, Mr. Ziv, I just wanted to introduce myself. Seems like we'll be working together. You've been transferred to the USS Sally Ride, and I'm the captain of that ship. Uh, it also seems like you're very busy right now. I don't want to get in your way. In fact, after a, a pretty brilliant idea from one of my ensigns, decided to offer my assistance in any way that I can. My really? crew and its complement is at your disposal, if you so wish. Captain, can I... There's a lot to unpack there. I'm just going to start with whatever you do, do not offer your crew to this starbase. You will never see them again. Wow. The other thing I was going to tell you, sir, is I had no idea I was being reassigned, and I'm thrilled to hear that I've been reassigned. <laughs> and the last thing I want to say is I'm actually not on duty right now, but I'm going insane at this starbase, sir. Understood. May I please, for the love of all that is holy in every race in this universe, report to duty on board the Sally Ride immediately. Sir. You may. You just see this intake and he says, thank you, sir. <laughs> so did you not want any of my crew to assist in anything happening down here? They're understaffed. They can't do anything around here. I mean, these kids are right out of the academy. I don't know what Starfleet Command is thinking of signing. I've done everything I can. I'm trying to show them the ropes, sir, but... I'm sure you have, and I'm sure you were doing everything you can, sure. We need supplies down here. We need personnel. I don't... I mean, I know Starfleet's got its reasons, but these, these poor kids, they're doing all they can, but they don't even know the other end of a... I'm sorry, sir. I, I, it's been rough at the Starbase. I gathered that, yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, sorry. Lieutenant Commander, you can report for duty now. Sally Ride, huh? Yes, sir. Seems fitting. Well, I promise not to wreck your ship, sir. I'm going to hold you to that. Lieutenant Commander, thank you. Well, I better go get my duffel bag. <laughs> and he moves on past you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to walk out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before somebody asks me something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're going to pause right there because 11 o'clock is going to be the time. We've actually gone a little over, but 11 o'clock is the start of our 10-minute break. Oh, so nice. yeah, I know we're already at 11, <laughs> already at 11 o'clock. Cream soda um, break. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick 10 minute break and we will be back here in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. Um, we're about to get underway with our very first mission. Ooh. So stay tuned. Ooh. 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 <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Shield of Tomorrow, everybody. We're back from our little quick 10 minute break at Star, at the Starbase at the moment at 138. Um, real quick before we uh, jump back into the game, um, I <laughs> my writers reminded me that we actually named these episodes. <laughs> so this is episode one, The Pull. Ooh. And I probably could have delivered that in a much more in Ooh. satisfactory way, but instead I'm just like, by the way, guys, this episode's called The Pull. Okay, let's it's keep perfect. going. <laughs> Thank you, yes, I, I like to deliver dramatically here. Yeah. The yeah. pool? Uh, anything, anything, anything I can the do to help? Pull. Like pull. the swimming pool? The, no, the as pull. in like, oh, the pull. as in like, come like, to me. As in like, I'm happy? Pulling. Yeah, exactly. Taffy, yeah. okay. Or like door. <laughs> yes, exactly. Push pull kind of thing. You went oh, straight like, to Taffy. I like Taffy. <laughs> I went straight good. to Amy's old show. <laughs> yeah, the pull. Oh. Our old show. Yeah. I, I had a I had a, a brief moment to to jump into chat and and listen to what you guys were saying and I got there just in time to see everyone telling Morn to shut up. <laughs> and that apparently Morn talks too much. It was cracking me up. I loved it. So we had our quick stories. break. There's coffee in that nebula. Mm. There's coffee in the nebula. Mm. Oh, I love Bonnie's Janeway impression. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Tuvok. Tuvok. Chicote. <laughs> she said Catherine Hepburn Five. when you do her, and Five. I love it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a mashup. It's yeah. A mashup. Uh, no. Um. Carl's okay. Gray. He's privately commissioning Bonnie right now to do more Janeway. <laughs> to do, do more Star Trek impressions. Do it. All right, I'm ready. All right. Back to Winston. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Um, oh, that was the announcement I needed to make before we jumped back into the game. Um, some of y'all were asking in chat about the rebroadcast. Um, now, for those of you who are familiar with Eric's TBD RPG, God rest its soul. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of, for those of you familiar with the previous incarnation of the show, Eric's TBD RPG, it used to air. Uh, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Fridays. Um, a lot of our old uh, audience members who've been following us for a while, namely those in the UK, uh, <laughs> which, by the way, Modifius, they all told us that they were going to, they, they sent me an email letting me know that they're going to stay up late drinking beers and watching this. So it's probably like ah. 3 and 30 in the morning over in the UK or something like that right now. 4.30 or something like that. Anyway. Cheers. It's awesome. later than that. Late Cheers. Morning. Probably later than that. I can ask. Sluncher. Um, Cheers. Early but, morning. Seriously. But to, I wish um, I had. But to address that, um, yes, we still plan on rebroadcasting this every Friday um, around the time of the old TBD RPG slot. Mm. So, oh. our old, so our fans who are used to tuning into us at noon on Fridays can still tune into us. There's only one variable. Um, whatever happens, the show has to end at 3 p.m. in the rebroadcast. So the rebroadcast has to wrap at 3 p.m., which means that if the show runs long, they may start earlier than noon. It may start at 11 if it's a long game. Um, because since we're the last show of the day on Wednesdays, we don't technically have a, a stop time, even though I know we all have to work in the morning, Be so we're probably going to try to have a stop time. Um, never. We're never leaving. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sam gives me that polite smile. <laughs> like, yes, you There's will stop at a decent time. Um, <laughs> time and days are decision <laughs> time measurement. Don't mean nothing out here in the black. <laughs> right. Lunchtime doubly Time so. is irrelevant. Um, okay, so uh, yes, there will be a rebroadcast of Shield of Tomorrow on Fridays. Um, it's right. just gonna, you're just gonna, we're gonna have to figure out a way to communicate to y'all when uh, it's good. The rebroadcast is gonna start, but if it's a long episode, like I said, it'll start earlier than noon. So just keep an eye on it, and uh, and Sax and everybody will totally let y'all know. And yeah, moving forward, that'll be the way it is. Um, in the meantime, um, there's a whole galaxy waiting to be explored. So let's get to that because um, because Star Trek, guys. Because Star Trek. Because we're totally playing Star Trek right now. I got it. I don't know if y'all know that yet. <laughs> All right. Starbase 138. Um, we'll do a quick time lapse. So it's been about a day. Um, in that 24-hour period, you guys have managed, Captain, even though you were, I, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I suspect Martinez probably would have lent some personnel anyway. Here's what happened. Yeah. This is what Captain Martinez did. Captain Martinez informed everybody, the entire crew of the USS Sally Ride, that we had a few days of shore leave, that they had quarters available to them if they so choose to use them, and that if they wanted to use those days, and this is a little bit like a how many pieces of flair do you want me to put on type of thing. Okay. I'm, I'm like heavily hinting. If you want to volunteer some of your time to help in any department that you think you can help, Feel free to do so. So that's the message that was put up by Captain Martinez. Okay. So there's probably a few people out there that might want to try to score brownie points with the captain. Yeah, or yeah, at yeah. the very least, the XO, who reviews everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or at least have a decent cream soda to drink. Gosh. Oh. Gosh, there's, we, we need to see an addiction counselor. I My fixed goodness. it. I fixed it. <laughs> um, no more grass. Uh, yes, for those of you who don't know, are, 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 are out of character, well, I don't know, maybe it is in character, I don't know, but the nickname we've given Sam's character is Ca Commander Killjoy. Actually, I think, Sam, you gave your character that nickname, or did we give your character that nickname? Who it knows where it originated so from? It is so natural that it <laughs> happened. <laughs> it was as inevitable as sunrise. <laughs> it has no beginning, no end. Yeah, exactly. Like we don't it's know a, where it began gym. or where yeah. it ended. Um, so to move us away and to get uh, underway, the Sally Ride finishes out her 24 hours here at Starbase 138 and crew cycle's complete. Some new personnel come on, but not many. Um, for the most part, the Sally Ride staff is gonna stay the way it is with the exception of one chief engineer. Um, as you guys leave Starbase 138 pulling away, um, you can't help but feel Martinez as you're looking on the, on the rear uh, view screen. You, you can't help but feel Slightly sorry for the people you're leaving behind at that starbase. Um, if rumor is to be believed, apparently they're going to be receiving relief soon. But right now, that place looks like a mining colony in space. Um, doctor, I will tell you that Throllo was actually able to... Um, it's so easy calling you doctor. I don't know why, but it just... <laughs> It just, it feels just so instinctual. Somehow. Sounds right. Like just a, rolls off the tongue. Yeah, feels just kind right. of like, I, I look at Amy and I think doctor mm. for some reason. Mm. Mm. Anyway, um, <laughs> but you were able to, um, you were actually able to do quite a bit of good in your time there. 
Um, and providing enough medical relief, uh, you were actually able to, I would say, by the time you rejoin the USS Sally Ride crew and get underway, um, you are exhausted. <laughs> um, you basically allowed some of the medical staff to go get some sleep and ended up pulling double shifts while they were able to work. Um, and when you started reaching the point where you realized you were going to need stimulants to keep going, you were smart and said, no, I'm not going to be that person and gave yourself a break. But ever since then, um, you've been playing catch up on board the Sally Ride. Um, with Starbase 138 in the rear view, uh, as you're all heading out into deep space, um, you were contacted by Starfleet Command um, uh, as you all are getting underway. Uh, what kind of a contact? It's a uh, low priority. Okay, good. Does that mean I can throw it up on the view screen? Yep, you can put it up on the view screen. Fantastic. Let's throw it up on the view screen. Okay. Appearing on the view screen is one Admiral Norwell Nash, mm. the Vice Admiral of the Quadrant and someone whom you are all acquainted with, as he was the one that helped staff the Sally Ride and the, uh, the one who helped uh, get you this commission, uh, Captain. Um, you see the old man's face come up on the screen, and he says, Captain. Admiral Nash. How's the ride treating you, sir? A little bumpy, but that's to be expected. How was your stop in at Starbase 138? I hear those folks are a little bit overworked over there. Yeah, they are. We helped in uh, as many ways as we could, but overworked is putting it mildly. I'm sure, sure they'll appreciate that. I'm happy to report that they're about to receive a significant amount of relief in the next 48 hours. Well, that's good. We never intended those folks to be working as hard as they have on their own, but I'm going to see to it personally that they get as much shore leave as I can grant them. Mm. Well, you know what they say, sir. Fate rarely calls upon us at a moment of our choosing. He smiles. says, I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> he nods and, and says... But yes, well said, absolutely. That actually is going to bring me to the order of the day, uh, Captain. Your orders right now, as it stand, you are to report to Deep Space Five, where you will be upgraded in both weapons and shields. We're on a bit of a timeline, so I would prefer it if you got there as soon as you could. But... Uh, no rush, no need to, s I wouldn't say you have any need to go past ma uh, the standard warp precautions of seven. Understood. And then we'll have further orders for you once the Sally Ride gets upgraded. Fair enough. All right then. Further orders will be coming down the pipe, but you'll be hearing from me soon. Until then, clear skies, Captain. Thank you, sir, clear skies. <laughs> Comes off the view screen. Um, Chief Engineer, Jiv, who's standing at the rear of the bridge, um, he says, upgrades? They're upgrading our shields and our weapons? What do you make of that, engineer? He, he looks at you and just says, uh, I mean, it sounds to me like they're expecting trouble or something, Captain. I mean, Sally Ride's got great shields and great weapons. We're not a warship. Indeed it does. Well, let's hope that that's not what they're expecting. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, uh, Ensign, you've got the uh, coordinates for Deep Space Five? I sure do, Captain. Um, for this, if, if, if it's a roll needed, I'd like to use my plot course. You don't need to roll. We're not in combat, so you don't have to roll for this, but you do have to subtract one power from the Sally Ride's uh, power supply, I believe, because you oh, are about poop. to go to warp. Mm. But with our improved warp engines, we can roll to see if we That's can That's right. So is it a challenge die? Yes. Okay. So let me give a, a quick explanation about challenge dice. The other set of dice that are used in the Star Trek RPG, as Sam is holding, are six-sided dice. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, you can use just a normal six-sided dice. But Modiphius, of course, did uh, with the work of Q Workshop, um, which I'm just now realizing is a brilliant <laughs> just <laughs> Q Workshop. Um, they are, this is the way it works. On a six-sided die, um, one counts for one, two counts for two. Threes and fours mean nothing, they're zeros. Um, but fives and six also count for one. But fives and six also trigger effects. Mm. 
So, for example, if you're shooting a phaser and you hit, and I tell you to roll damage, you'll be rolling challenge dice. And you'll roll the challenge dice and add all the numbers together that count. Ones, twos, fives, six. But fives and six trigger effects. So if you rolled a five or a six on a phaser blast, you could say, ah, I got an effect here. I'm going to use three charges of my phaser's power core and activate an effect. And I'm going to do a wide beam. Or I'm going to make this uh, a penetrating shot so their armor doesn't absorb as much of it. Things like that. So the same will uh, also come into play uh, throughout the game, but the, that's essentially the basics of the challenge die. And in this case, the challenge die is going to allow us to not have to spend a point of power from the warp core in order to plot, in order to jump. Did you already hmm. roll? Yeah. Who, who wants to roll for that? I would say. I, the I would, XO? I, would I did make sense. a roll. <laughs> What, like did, you, what did you get? I'm not necessarily sure you sh it should be my roll. <laughs> right. Oh. I mean, I just did it because I did it last time. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and keep your roll. What oh. was it? Yeah, no, it was a two. It was a two. Okay, okay so, um, so the Sally Ride spends one point of power from her warp core, okay. and you guys jump to warp. Um, <clears throat> Maybe I go a little bit past warps up. No, I'll just stick it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Sally Ride enters warp. You need those nacelles fold up on the back as the mm. Intrepid class slides into warp. Finally. And you blast through. Um, again, the Sally Ride, the Intrepid class starships, uh, even though you've been sailing on this ship for over a year, um, every chance you get to go to warp, this, she hums. This is what she was meant to do. Um, and. But about, I'd say about two hours into your travel through warp. Um, by the way, what warp speed are you going? I'm going warp seven. <laughs> he said. <laughs> okay. Um, that's, that's really up to the, I mean, oh, yeah. No one Captain, do you, have a, do, you have a, do you have a problem with that? No, I said, I said specifically, set a course ensign, warp seven, punch it. And then we did. All right. I there made you go. it so. Warp seven. <laughs> I, um, he says, do it, I do it. What's the cruising speed for Sally Ride? I believe it's warp six. That's what I think. So you would, would you even have to spend a power point to go above? That's when you would have to spend it. Normally you wouldn't have to spend a power point because cruising speed is warp six, but at warp seven you would have to spend a power point. Isn't that right? I believe that's what we just saw in the rules. We are six, yes. As the commander looks it up. Cruise speed was warp six. No. Yeah. Um, I think, there. didn't we decide that if it was cruising, I think we read somewhere in the rules that if it's cruising speed, it doesn't cost a power point off the warp mm. core. We don't I have to ask about that. I think that is a great thing for us just to decide for tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll look it up later. We're going back, to upset yeah. you're going to have to spend a PowerPoint anyway. As we learn the rules. Um, about two hours into, uh, into the journey, um, Talon, yes. I'm going to need you to make a roll. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so. Now we're going to get into some of the cool stuff that you can do. Is it science? It is. It's going to be science. cool. Science officer can cool. do science um, stuff. <laughs> so this is going to be actually, um, I would say, make a. This is going to be an insight. Okay. Actually. Hmm. I'm going to say make an insight. Uh, yeah, we'll say insight science on this one. Insight and science? And science, yeah. Okay, so 15. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a roll. The difficulty is one. <coughs> uh, I have one success, a nine. A nine, okay. Mm -hmm. um, we do have advanced sensor suites. So I was going to say. Yeah. Um, oh. The other thing is you are going to now, one of you has to roll for the Sally Ride. So another piece of information for you folks watching at home, in Star Trek, adventures, the ship you fly is essentially an MPC that the entire party gets to control. And everyone on our crew here has been given a copy of the USS Sally Ride's character sheet. Now, She's one, of, one of the cool things about the Sally Ride, and indeed all the ships, the way the mechanics work in the game is, is that in game, if you're attempting a task and somebody wants to help you, they can assist. They're able to roll 1d20, and if you roll at least one success, they can add their successes to you. Um, making it possible to build momentum, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the Sally Ride, anytime you're on board the ship and using her systems, the Sally Ride will assist you any way she can. So, you rolled one success, 
So now I need one of the crew members to roll 1d20 for the USS Sally Ride. I'll do it. And you are going to use her computers and con. So five. You got right? computers. Oh no, that's departments. <laughs> yeah. So her computer 11, systems, which I believe is... 11. 11, con. right. Got it. And con. So 14. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, no uh, I'm right. sorry. Not computers. Communications. Ah. So roll... 10 and con, so 13. 10 and con, so a total of 13. Go mm -hmm. ahead, roll 1d20 and add... Tell me what you get. 13 or lower. <gasps> oh! Critical crit, success. Crit. Woo! Crit, crit. Okay. I got a Star Trek symbol. First crit of the game. First crit of the game. Yeah. Okay. Crit, so crit, crit. two successes. So Two successes adds to her success, meaning mm -hmm. three total successes. Mm -hmm. So, since you got two successes over the target number, Ooh. you gain two momentum. Woo! I was gonna put and we get one more because our advanced sensor suites reduce the DC of anything using the ship sensors by one. But it's communications. Uh, oh, did we not use sensors for the original? No, I was letting her use her science ability to pick uh, up gotcha. the communication. Gotcha. All right, then we yeah. have momentum but, too. Thank you. But that's very good to know because I don't have that written down on my, on my version of Sally's mm -hmm. character sheet. So that's just for everyone. Watching. I will send you the Sally Red Talent oh, weapons. Yes, yeah. you got it. Oh, I have it. Well, well we, we should both keep it. Keep track of it. Keep track of it that way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sam knows. Sam's got this handled. Yeah. So, uh, so Sam, I I'm going to tell y'all. Sam, when we were preparing for the game, Sam did a full printout of the Sally Ride. Uh, three pages worth, and then went Wait, into the archive that? and printed out the specifications yes. to USS Voyager <laughs> that we could use. And it's like a technical manual hill. Yeah. If you can have a player like about. Sam, do mm. it. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, you roll two successes, you gain two momentum. Now, for those of you watching at home, momentum is the backbone of this game. Momentum is uh, something you can spend right away, or you can save it in a party pool. The maximum you can have in that pool is six momentum, um, and they do, they disappear at a rate of one momentum per scene if they're not spent. Um, so what momentum allows you to do is crazy stuff, like add dice to your roll, you can increase your chances of succeeding, you can ask the GM questions, you can make it more difficult on my NPCs as they're trying to pull some bullshit on you. Um, all sorts of really cool things Momentum use. Sam used Momentum to beat the unholy hell out of a Klingon that messed with them in a bar. I had um, a little bit. You, okay. Yes, you did. You kicked a Klingon in a ball, so I'm going to applaud body, you. Well done. I believe it was well body done. slammed. I body slammed You body slammed the Klingon in a Klingon in, uh, yes. yes. Give him um, a sad, sad day. Wolfman's got nards. Had a girl. So, anyway. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yay, Monster Squad reference. Monster Squad yeah. reference in Yay. Star Trek. It, why not? Um, it's a classic movie night. Yeah. Captain yeah, makes yeah, yeah. Sage, you pick the weirdest movies. We should do a season mm. of Dread that's Monster Squad. Mm. Wouldn't that be nuts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amy's freaking out. I know the song. Yes, please. It's the Monster Squad. So what do we get on our comms roll? Oh, yeah. Back to the game. Sorry. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, you got two successes. All right. So what you get is um, Talon. Yes. Um, you're sitting at your science station when you see an alert beeping at your console. Um, it looks like an incoming communication. Captain, we have an incoming communication. <laughs> Put it through. Um, appearing on screen, you see an uh, alien gentleman. Let me pull this up here. Again, lots of stuff to flip through. All right. Are you familiar with what a Zach Dorn is in Star Trek? I'm afraid I'm not. Okay, in Star Trek The Next Generation, a Zach Dorn appears and plays a game against Data of, called Stratagem. It's in ah. season two. It's the game yes. where they hook their little fingertips up to the computer and oh, start yes. like, doing the wibbly-wobbly things. Um, essentially, they look vaguely humanoid, but they have sort of this weird cartilage like on the sides of their face. They're right. known for being some of the most brilliant str strate strategists in the galaxy. They are brilliant, incredibly analytical, um, and slightly duplicitous. They're known for, they, let's just say you don't want to play chess with these guys. Um, and one of them actually appears on screen, um, repeating over and over, this is George Pranash. Is anyone reading this? This is Dr. George Pranash. Come in. Dr. Is Pranash, we're reading you, doctor. This is the USS Sally Ride. This is Captain Martinez you're speaking with. Sally Ride, a Federation starship. Yes. <laughs> I can't tell you what a relief it is to hear your voice, Captain. Do you need assistance? Are you hurt? We are experiencing some pretty extraordinary events here 
I, 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 it starts to static immediately. Starts to cut can in. We strengthen and out for a that second. signal. Is there any way we can strengthen that signal? Uh, if you, uh, I would say yes. If you want to make a roll here, yes. Um, and I'll let you decide who wants to make this roll, but it's going to be a computer's uh, con roll. Uh, I'm sorry, I, communications. Again, communications. Con, uh, con I want to let uh, Lieutenant Commander Talon make that roll. Okay. Captain, I'm attempting to strengthen the signal. Go ahead and see what you roll. Difficulty is going to be one. Uh, and this is the same insight and science? Uh, no, this is going oh. to be, uh, for you, yes. I would say this actually, mm, insight and science might be overdoing it on this one. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and say insight oh, science I on mean, this one. Or no, you know con what? Con ops is, I mean, it's uh, instead of insight science, I would use control, control and science. All right, so sixteen. Sixteen. Nice. Okay. Nice. Ah, oh, two. Two successes? No, just one. Mm -hmm. But one of them is a two. Is that is that anything? Are you pulling uh, into no. a focus no. right now? You don't have a focus. That's going no, to apply I don't. To this. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's going to be one success. One success. One success. Okay, what was cool. the difficulty? One. Yeah. Difficulty was one. So you got it. Good job. Right. Roll for the you, ship. What's that? Do we have a roll for the ship? Uh, yeah. You, somebody needs to roll uh, for the Sally right. Thank you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. So Commander roll. Rune somebody. Roll. Anybody who wants to rolls one d twenty, and it will be again a communications plus con roll. Rue's got it. All right. Thirteen. No. No. Nope. Not today. Um, Not today. Not Despite the fact that Sally Ride is having difficulty, you're able to compensate for the interference that's happening. It doesn't look like it's jamming of any kind. It looks like it's local interference. Mm. But as it starts to clear up again, you hear him say, Citrian 7, the weather patterns here have been picking up, Captain. It's, it's gotten a little out of control. And it's happened rather suddenly. Over the past few days, it just seems like the planet itself has begun to turn on us. And eventually we were monitoring at first. It seemed natural enough. But the storms, and we've even detected some seismic activity. There's been no evidence of volatility in this planet's atmosphere since we founded this research facility. And certainly none since we started studying this planet years ago. Now it seems like, well, we might be in a bit of trouble, Captain. If you need assistance, Doctor, we are on our way. Do you think that you'll need to evacuate? I don't know. We might need medical help more than anything when you arrive. Understood. Thank you, Captain. I'll be awaiting your arrival. Just hang on as best you can. Thank you, Doctor. Citrian 7 out. And cuts off. I assume he sent over coordinates. Yeah, Citrian 7 is in mm -hmm. the database. It's a Federation colony. Oh, it's fantastic. a research facility. Class mm. M planet, and according to the data archives in the computer, um, Citrine 7 is, in fact, a temperate and calm planet. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about it. In fact, the atmosphere, typically, the most volatile it ever gets is a balmy 87 degrees. That's about it. How long is it going to take for us to get there? Um, at warp 7 in about 20, 21 hours. 21 hours, okay. All right, Ensign set in that course. Yes, sir, Captain. Warp 7, they need our help. Uh, I want to get as much information about this planet and about this group of scientists that I can. Okay. Captain, may I, may I speak freely? Of course, always, Talon. We were reported, we were to report to Deep Space Five for advancements in our weaponry. Correct, yes. Is this a diversion from our order to report there? No, we still uh, obviously intend to report to Deep Space Five, but this is an emergency that sprung up. And if there's an opportunity to help people in need, then we're gonna help them. Ah, I understand. Commander Helping Tron. people. Yeah. You're an excellent scientist. Atmospheric phenomena and seismic phenomena typically have very distinct causes, don't they? Well, what could possibly cause both of them? Simultaneously. That's a good point, Commander, yeah. Well, let's see, theoretically, seismic activity, if it was resulting in volcanic eruptions, for instance, could affect the weather. Hmm. I cannot think of any actual scientific way that weather could affect seismic activity. Hmm. So I'm not sure. 
it does seem very strange, Commander. I agree with you. Captain, you know what I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to have you say it out loud just for, <laughs> just for good measure, Commander. This could be a trap. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We should at least make tactical plans in that case. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. As long as those plans involve me and my doctor kit. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, in the meantime, uh, can we report to my ready room where we can go over some of this information. I want to go over some theories. I want to be prepared. Sure. Like I said, I want to research this doctor, this uh, Jor Pranash. I want to see if Starfleet has any information on him and possibly his team, what he was doing there, uh, all of that. So, okay. to the ready room. All right. Da, 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 da. So senior staff convenes. Actually, you'd I'm probably kidding. what is the what is the name? I'm sorry, the conference room. <laughs> Got yeah, it. the yeah, conference yeah, yeah. room. You guys convene yes. in the conference room. Okay, great. Um, is it an observation? The lounge? observation lounge. Yes. I think is the name, the official name of it. The observation um, lounge. To the is observation lounge. To the observation lounge. Yes. I also think we never probably said it, but in practice games, we established that you guys fitted me up a little second science station because mm -hmm. I hang out on the bridge. Too yeah. Much. And this is yeah. a science vessel, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a science Thanks. vessel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there would be a secondary science station for you if you want to be working on the bridge at any particular moment. Um, too much, there's not so much going on in the bay. And for those at home, does Lieutenant Commander Veth Ziv, does he also have a spot on the bridge? Our, our chief engineer? Yeah. Ziv actually could transfer uh, bridge uh, engineering controls up. Oh, right now he's an engineer. He what you guys have come to learn about Ziv uh, is just his short time here. Mm -hmm. Is he, You're not sure he actually ever leaves engineering. <laughs> um, Classic Tellerite. <laughs> he, you're not sure he goes back uh. to his quarters. <laughs> um, hmm. He doesn't seem to smell the next day, so there's an indication that at some point he at least cleans himself some up. Some point he, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Do, um, are any of us curious enough to actually confirm that with any sort of uh, video footage <laughs> from the video ship? Video footage. I can pull it up. Back. Who do you think is running? Not, I'm saying it's not that important. Of course I did. It's not a priority. Okay, great. Command Ruhr already are you determined. Um, confirm. I actually, yeah, I'm surprised. Yes, that, yeah. yes you Ziv can confirm that. Shower. You can confirm that Jib probably goes back to his quarters. Um, probably drinks some kind of vile substance in his quarters while looking over a crew roster. Um, probably doesn't take his uniform off, jumps into bed, and in a, then... In a typical 24-hour cycle, how many hours do Tellarites sleep? About the same as humans. That's uh, impressive. Tellarites really don't have that much of a difference in their... It's not, it's not a huge variable in, mm -hmm. in their days and how their sleep cycles. Um, plus, on board a starship, everyone kind of gets on board the same cycle. Um, this Tellarite, despite the fact he's older for a Tellarite and a veteran of Starfleet, he just seems to operate like a machine, kind of. I'm not going to argue with him. Yeah. Mm. Um, but when you call staff up to ready room, you all... It's also worth pointing out that despite the fact that he is the newest member of the senior staff, uh, Lieutenant Commander Shiv has been the least reachable. When he's not on duty or you're not talking to him directly for orders, he doesn't associate with anybody. He's been keeping himself locked up in the engine room doing work. And if you need him, he, 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 you summon him and he'll come. Otherwise, you don't see him in the galley ever. You don't see him walking the halls ever. He's not on the holodeck or anything. It's only been about 24 hours since you guys have left 138. Sure. So there's not a whole lot to go off of here. But it's pretty clear right now that the old Tellarite seems somewhat like a curmudgeon. And that's saying something for a Tellarite. Well, I would like to make a note of that okay. with Commander Roo. Note that in your log. I'm obviously going to run it by them and say, can you possibly set up some sort of a reminder for me to make an effort to socialize with our new crew person? You need to break the Tellarite in. Yeah. I consider it a challenge. And, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> we need to get this guy. We need to get him I've got my crew. Something. Maybe I'll have a Scotty. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> got to break down those walls. Okay. So. All right. Well, it's good to have a measure of the man. Uh, on that note, exactly. a few minutes later, as you all begin to assemble in the observation lounge, uh, he comes thumping into the room. It's hard for him to not to make noise. As a Tellarite, he is a, he is a bulky, like, powerful-looking um, Tellarite with very large feet. <laughs> kind of hear him walking down the hall no matter what. He stomps into the room, makes his way over, pulls a chair out, and without saying a word, just takes a seat, plops his hands up on the table. Ah, uh, is he aware of the fact, uh, have we, I'm assuming it's only been 24 hours, so he might not 
have we might not have had our briefing yet with him. It's true. Is he? Tr- is there he hasn't been much of an orientation yet. Ah, mm. so yeah. he doesn't even realize that uh, because of Commander Rue, we <laughs> use paper. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to pass that out now? It's already there. Oh, okay. So as you all sit down, you've yep. now you've served with Commander Rue for a year, so you've become accustomed to this rather unusual, but unbreakable policy of theirs. <laughs> Commander Ru likes to put paper and writing materials out for senior staff. In addition to data pads. In addition to data that pads. That are standard issue. <laughs> Those are totally Starfleet. Open. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can totally use that. However, um, paper and pencil is supplied for senior staff. And when the Tellerite sits down, he looks at it and just... Problem. Yeah, I think someone left their paper on the desk. Yeah. No, Problem. Here. No. He offers it to you. I let it hang. Anybody uh, else want it? I'm just going to casually pass him a pencil just to kind of give him a hint that it's supposed to be there. Okay. He takes the pencil and says, Oh, you. It's not a joke. All oh, right. L- Lieutenant Commander, I apologize. We haven't had a chance to. Uh, to give you fair warning, uh, we haven't had a briefing yet. That's f- for you if you so choose to use it. So let's get this meeting underway. I want ideas, and I want them n- as quickly as they form in your head. We are heading towards a planet that is dealing with both seismic and weather anomalies. Is that correct? Uh, so I want to know what could potentially be happening before we go into what could potentially be a trap, as Commander Ru pointed out earlier. So does anybody trap. here have any ideas? Yeah. Yes, sir. The Tellerite sits back. Is there anything to suggest that it's a trap? It's a person contacting us in space. It's a contingency we have to prepare for. Absolutely. Um, well, Captain, I did, I did some research on the Zakdorn, mm-hmm. and um, they are a species that is very advanced in strategy. Mm-hmm. And they often like to create situations where people will be challenged. Strategically, okay. Good, great. Good Zach to know. Dorn. Yeah. Oh, no. Do you have experience with the Zach Dorn, well, Lieutenant Commander? Yeah. Nothing that's too relevant, honestly, Captain. It's At just this point, we're early enough that everything is relevant. Please, share your information. I don't want to sound, you know, close-minded. But a lot of the Zach Dorn I run into like to treat just about everything like a game, and if they get an opportunity to explain how you're inferior, they will. We might be able to use that to our advantage somehow, I'm not sure, but that's my experience with a lot of Zach Dorn. I wouldn't consider that all the way close-minded, as long as you're not assuming that every Zach Dorn is that way. I feel like it's not close-minded to say that Vulcans are mostly, usually logical, correct, Talon? Yes, I would say so. Not close-minded. Not at all. And most Tellarites are pains in the ass, Captain. I, I would agree. I think we're all on the same page. Here. I didn't say it. You did, but I said all right. it. Great. <laughs> uh, Captain, may I make a suggestion <laughs> on yes, that please, note? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. If if it's, uh, they're saying that it's the weather that's causing a lot of these problems. If it's controlled by some kind of technology, maybe it could be a simple malfunction. But I feel like if they are as intelligent as everyone is saying, that they would be more than capable of fixing it themselves. I agree. And I thought of that. Yes, apparently this planet, Centurion 7, is that uh, the name of it? Citrian. Citrian? Citrian 7. Citrian 7 uh, is just a, uh, a, a research planet, correct? Class M? Uh, uh, your files show that it is, in fact, a research facility. It looks like it's a research facility that was designed for essentially helping with colonization efforts uh, and advancing natural crop growth. Is there anything else noteworthy on this planet? I mean, the research facility is located on a continent that's roughly the size of Australia. Um, the, the planet itself has had a, there has been no significant um, weather phenomenon on this planet in the past 200,000 years. Okay. It's essentially kind of become a calm class M planet that has not been it certainly has never displayed anything disruptive that would demand a distress call. How many people are down there? 
the colony, according to Starbase, Starbase, uh, Starfleet database, 150 scientists are currently 150 scientists. on that research station. I would like to remind everybody that uh, you may or may not know this, but Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the USS Enterprise, when he marooned intergalactic terrorist Khan Noonien Singh on SETI Alpha 5, that planet became uninhabitable because of a star, a nearby star, that had uh, uh, collapsed upon itself and threw the gravity of the entire uh, solar system out of whack. So could that, be a, could that be a possibility? Is there something nearby this planet that could have affected, that could be affecting the environment uh, and the tectonic plates in this way? Wow. Can we do a research role for that? Um, the computer will tell you immediately if any celestial phenomenon has caused a disruption in the gravitational pull of the planets in that system. Um, I won't have you roll for that. Okay. Um, essentially, Starfleet records have shown that there has been no unusual phenomenon detected in that area for some time. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly none in the past, I would say, 200,000 years is any evidence is available that mm -hmm. any sort of celestial phenomenon has taken place that would cause uh, planet-wide uh, weather pattern anomalies. Hmm. Uh, <coughs> Captain, may, may I also make a suggestion? Please. Uh, when we arrive there, if the weather is as they say, and there might be uh, too much interference to transport down, uh, I don't know if I'd recommend taking Sally Ride through that kind of turbulent, or I, I, we don't exactly know what's causing it, so I would suggest taking a shuttle down instead. Of course. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I would volunteer myself to pilot. That's great. Okay. I agree Thank with you. all of that, yeah. You know, Captain, uh, if you do need to take the, the ride down to the planet's surface, I could probably help her out with that. Good to know, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you. If you got and uh, I didn't know we were calling her the ride. Is that what we're doing? Is that the nickname? What do y'all call her? <laughs> he looks around at the table. <laughs> we do not have a nickname for our ship. Yeah, not well, yet. We should come up with one, don't you think? It's a relatively new vessel, but I, I don't disagree with that. Should we call her the Sally? The ride? Nicknames happen. They're not decided Nicknames upon. Happen. That's right. We'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in it. We'll put a pin in it. Commander Rue, is there any possibility that this could be an attack <laughs> of any sort from any sort of hostile alien race? Absolutely possible. We don't have that much information. The way I see it, there are a few possibilities. We can solve this problem scientifically and technically and... Lieutenant Commander Talon can spend her preparation time thinking of whatever various possibilities and I, what we could do about it. I feel an or coming on. Well, or we can't solve it and we have to act supportively. Um, our doctor, I'm sure, would be a great assistance. Or It's a trap. Right, mm. yes. In which case, even if this is a problem that we can solve or support, we wouldn't be harmed by taking an unconventional approach to the planet. Perhaps Helm could plot a course near the planet that isn't just a straight shot, so that we at least minimize the risk of getting caught in something we don't intend to be in. So for player knowledge, just so you all know, um, typical standard procedure is you always come out of warp at the edge of a system and impulse into the system. No yeah. one ever actually warps into a system. That's really dangerous. Right. Yeah. So, um, so that, that'll actually give you, as you were just suggesting, Sam, that'll give you exactly what you were just suggesting. Mm -hmm. right. So if you're able to co coast Enough in on impulse time. power, you might be able to get a good look as to what the situation is before you just jump in with your Well, I figured yeah. that we'd actually cut, uh, drop out of warp a little bit sooner than oh, would okay. normally be anticipated. I, I, I agree so with get that. Kind of a look so around. that if it's just exactly where you'd think it would be. Mm -hmm. yes. You want to periscope up, basically, and yeah. just yeah. Take, take a look. Okay, I cool. can uh, maneuver us very close, Captain, but they will not, um, I don't believe they'll be able to, to uh, suspect that we're there yet. I Good. Can, I can actually get us, I can, I wasn't going to say this, but I can actually get us there a lot faster than where we're going now, if, if you want me to, the element of surprise. Well, not mm. even an element of surprise, just, you know, if we want to get there a little bit sooner. Would they be expecting us 21 hours from when we got uh, the, the distress call? Um, it's hard to say. 
Okay. Um, Sally, again, the Sally ride is a very fast ship. Um, so they didn't really have an ETA on when you would be arriving. And most importantly, I think I want to do as much research on the doctor and his team if possible. I don't know what other information we can pull sure. from exactly the personnel that are personnel down file. there. Okay. Uh, in, in, with whatever other scientific expertise they have, anything else they've been involved in, where their loyalties lie, anything and everything. Okay. We've got 20 hours to go. Might as well prep. Maybe I there's someone they've been at conferences with who could give us a little bit of yes. subspace, pretty, like lowdown. So just so you all know, it is pretty standard issue that when you are responding to a distress call that you go to yellow alert. So absolutely. When, so okay. you guys are taking absolutely the perfect amount of precaution right now. Because we're it's gonna, true. Yeah, we're going to drop out of a warp. A distress call could totally be a alert. trap. Yeah. I will it's be, happened I, many I times before, as you all know. I can definitely move us around so they won't be able to detect us, Captain. Great. Fantastic. And Captain, right. may I suggest that before we arrive at the planet, we should probably tell Starfleet that we are answering this distress call. Oh, have we not done that yet? Yeah, well, we, we should not. definitely it's, do it's, that. Um, so just we so you know, um, <laughs> I'm going to assume, unless you state otherwise, I'm going to assume that when you take a course deviation from mission plan. Yes. Just so we don't bog down in detail. Okay. It's great that you bring that up, though, because okay. that's totally what Talon would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, just um, for future reference, yeah, the unless, only you say unless we specifically tell you we're not reporting something to Starfleet. Yeah. Because okay. we're afraid. Starfleet knows what's going on. Because we're afraid we're dealing with a corrupt Starfleet officer that's actually an evil space worm or something. I love Just that assume that we'll, or yeah. change, like, just assume that, yeah, we're checking in with Starfleet. We, we, okay. are, we are halfway through the very first episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. to tomorrow and the paranoia is rampant. Ah! Yeah. We got plots, y'all. Yeah. We got plots for days. Well, I, <laughs> there are chill. Romulans I'm everywhere. Chill. They're in the air ducts. They're watching us right now, man. After, after losing Why would the tactical <laughs> officer be cautious? Right. Anything could be a changeling. Yeah. Anything could be a changeling. Yeah. A be column, fair. a door, a part of plant. In episode zero. I know. To be I fair, okay. <laughs> to give to give to give our audience some backstory. <laughs> to be fair, episode zero, our <laughs> intrepid heroes responded <laughs> to a distress call that ended up being a freaking ambush by <laughs> the Orion Trade the Crime Syndicate. I refuse so to I call it a no-win scenario. <laughs> it was not a no-win scenario. It, it I was, failed. <laughs> That's what happened. No, no, it was it's, tactically I, disadvantageous. It's not the same thing. So, <laughs> I, I, as, a, as a GM, I completely appreciate everyone's a little gun shy about responding to distress calls like, at this uh, point. People are watching like, I don't remember I'm just Star like, Trek like this. Yeah, yeah, I will take one. the shuttle by myself. Are we there yet? <laughs> the doctor's like, there are people to heal, guys. Come We're on. also yeah. Rewatch yeah. the, th the finale of season three of Deep Space Nine. It's real, y'all. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Everybody's Shit paranoid. It's the fan. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We're um, gonna take blood tests soon. Yes. Like, Happy too. Okay. Oh, that'll be sad. As you come out of warp at the far edge of the system, you're just outside the perimeter of the Citrine, the Citrine system um, when you receive an urgent communications from Starfleet Command. On screen. Um, and immediately you see once again Admiral Nash's face on screen. Captain, I was informed of your course deviation. Where are you in your mission right now? We have just arrived at the Saturian system, uh, hoping to, within the hour, provide aid to, uh, to Zakdorian scientists that may need it. Very well. Keep me informed. Will do. I'm actually contacting you to give you some rather alarming news. Three hours ago, Starfleet Command received a direct communique from the Klingon Empire. Chancellor Gowron has officially withdrawn the Klingon Empire from the Kittimer Accords. I can't give you any more details at this point in subspace, but as the reports come in, I'll inform you all. Just be aware, moving forward, any Klingon vessels you encounter in flight, they're not your ally anymore, Captain. They're not your enemy, but they're certainly not your ally. More information will be coming in. Until then, Captain. Understood, Admiral. Thank you. Starfleet Command out. And when the screen cuts back to the system, there's a good two minutes of silence on the bridge that just weighs on everyone. And all you hear is the faint beeping of the consoles as you are all looking out onto the view screen of the distant star of the Citrian system. Um, no one says a word, and the silence says everything. And after a few moments pass, finally, 
you hear Ziv say, well, damn. <clears throat> Ensign, how far away are we from, uh, from uh, Centurion 7? Uh, we're close enough to where I can pull it up on the view screen now, Captain, if you wish. Yep, Citrine 7 comes up on the view screen. You see an M-class planet, um, one moon. Uh, it looks like it is actually currently um, mostly covered in clouds. Um, and you can see flashes of light in the clouds all throughout the planet. Clearly, a, I would say a planet-wide storm system maybe the size of multiple hurricanes has kind of sprouted up around the system itself. Just a side note, in the time that we warped here, did we learn anything about any individual oh. members? Yeah, I can tell oh. you about that. Okay, great. Um, great. So here's who are on staff. Okay. Uh, part of the 150 scientists that are stationed here at this planet, Citrian 7, um, the head of the science team is Dr. Jor, J-O-R, Pranaj, P-R-I-N-A-J. P R sorry. P R I N A J Pranaj. Got it. Um, Pranaj's chief assistant is Dr. Geet G E E T Zarima Z A R E A M A. She is his uh, second in command and assistant. Followed by the research post medical doctor. Dr. Tobel Bob, T O B E L B H V, B A H V. T O, what was that? T O B E L B A H V. B or D? I heard B is in boy, A H V is in Victor. A H V, that's correct, Bob. Okay. All Zach Dorney? Yep, this is a uh, this is a uh, this is a research facility specifically. It's just made up of Zach Dorn. What I want to know is, are there any backgrounds that might cause alarm? There is nothing in the personnel files to flag any sort of. They're suspicion. clean. Yeah, it looks like they've all served a lot of time as research uh, in research and specifically in not only geology but also mostly biology. And, uh, and agriculture. Um, lots of botanists stationed here. Hmm. Um, but there's nothing in the files to indicate anything suspicious whatsoever. It looks like they've all got a long record of being uh, scientists here Good. for the Zach Dorn. It's also worth noting that they're Federation citizens. The Zach Dorn are members yes. of the Federation. Hmm. And I've never met a botanist that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Quote of the game. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, we should get to the root of the problem. Talon, the... anything you're picking up on sensors? Would you uh, like to run a scan? Yes. Oh <laughs> my goodness, the Sally Ride is scanning. Ooh. Life forms. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> you okay. precious little life, life forms. forms. Beep, 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 beep. Please don't sue a CBS. Uh, <laughs> are we in a new scene? Yeah. Yes, you so in a new scene, so you're going to lose one momentum. Thank you for reminding me. When do we get You know that what, though? Momentum. I'm going to give you that momentum back just oh. because you reminded me. Aww. No joke. Aww. I'm going to be nice. He is the game master. He's I am. We're all learning. We're um, all learning. I'll give you back that momentum. GM's discretion. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, so go ahead and make your... This is going to be a reason science roll. Reason? Who? 17. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you're like, oh, time to get bulking on this thing. Oh. You want me to um, roll for and the... Sally oh, two successes. Two successes, okay. Um, and uh, what is this scan for? Because The difficulty is two, so two successes oh, okay. is gonna hit it. I didn't get a chance to tell you the difficulty. The scan, you're basically Sorry. scanning, I'm guessing you're scanning the planet, is that correct? What is the scan for? Uh, uh, I thought we might take a look at the atmospheric composition, that's but fine. I'm not the scientist. Yeah, okay. Just a general scan of the planet. Composition. So, the, two, so Roll the Sally Ride is going to be making her, I believe this is going to be her, does she have? Sensor, sensor science? It's gonna be her sensor science, yeah. Yeah. Sensor science. This is what she does it's best. Girl. I'm not rolling anymore tonight. You go and oh, dice no. break. Oh, no. <laughs> dice break for you. Oh, no. It's because the Sally, she, the Sally ride knows. She's like, but you're blasty. <laughs> 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 I want the lizard plant creatures, my commander. Where is she? Where are they at? I want to know where they're at. Oh, sorry. Don't do that. Don't to do me. that to me. Eric, no. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, no. <laughs> um, so. So that was two momentum from the. 
No, two successes. I have two, two successes, successes two and it's difficulty two. Difficulty was yeah. two. No. Ah, and this but, was for the atmosphere? <laughs> yes, this is for the skin. Atmospheric but, content. however, you did succeed. So, you can actually get some information from me, and then you can spin momentum after the fact to get more information if you want. So this is All a right. sensor scroll, though. Oh, that's right. So what do you... That means it's DC1 instead of DC2. Oh, that's right. So you are going to gain so momentum right. because you guys gain are using momentum. advanced sensor oh. suite in an Intrepid class starship. See, but you are like... actually... Can you we still get more information from you, though, after if you... If you spend momentum. Yeah, Got you it. can burn momentum to ask the GM fun. questions. Sam nice. is the only nice. one. I know, man. <laughs> I was. I was Don't use that on me. I know, I know. It's, it's a lot of pressure, but the truth is, is when we had questions about the rules, Sam reached out themselves and mm -hmm. got in contact with Modifius. And Thank you for answering, by the way. We appreciate you yeah. so much. Seriously, it was really cool. late, and, and Modifius is staying up and just emailing us back rules yeah. answers and stuff Eric, like that. Eric, totally I cool. Think we've established that it's like early morning right now in the UK, I think. Good morning. I think. Probably, yes. Quick yeah. good question. Morning. Are you, are you watch the VOD. I am studious. Does that by the mean way. extra questions? Ooh. I'm, uh, yes. yes, that's one of my uh, talents. Hold on. Yes. Real quick before Good I roll call, this roll. Uh -huh. like I just want to give, I don't know, y'all didn't know this, but when we were running our uh, TBD RPG through the rebroadcasts on Sunday, Modifius was hosting us. Oh, so, buddies. And so was Felicia, but she always hosts us. But thank you anyway. Aww. Love you guys. All right. All right. So what do you get? So I have intense scrutiny and studious. Okay. So what do those do for you? Those are your talents, yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can read my handwriting. <laughs> uh, whenever you succeed at a task using reason or control. Which you did. Which I did. Uh, as part of an extended task, you may ignore up to two resistance for every effect roll. Okay, there was no resistance yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and whenever you spend one or more momentum to obtain information, you may ask one additional question. That's pretty rad. That's yeah, studious. There we go, there we that go. lets you yeah. pull a Spock on just about everything you do. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So go. So you got your roll. You got three. What is that? Total of how many successes? Three? So, so you got one momentum. Two, I got two. two with the roll. Okay. Yes. And the difficulty was lowered by one. The difficulty yes. was originally two. So we two. get one momentum. We got we did. that. We got so it. You, and now I ask okay, cool. a question. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, so here's what you detect. The sensors roll initially will tell you that the planet is undergoing an intense ionization effect in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just thunder and lightning. It seems like the planet itself is undergoing more than just like hurricane level storms. It looks like there is a serious um, weather event taking place that is actually causing an ionization effect in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You can tell just from that sensor reading right up the bat, I'll tell you right now, you ain't transporting down there. The only way down to the planet's surface is going to be through a shuttlecraft or landing the Sally ride on the surface. <sighs> um, Challenge accepted. <laughs> you're like, hell yeah. Um, so that's that. And then the answer to your momentum question. Mm -hmm. Did you spend a momentum? You did, right? We're Not about yet, to. But you're about to. Do so it. that's the initial skin. That's what the wait, initial wait, wait, skin will tell you. But I get an additional. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you okay. spend so it, if you spend a momentum, you get to ask. You get it's like, if you spend a momentum, it's like spending two momentums. Basically, Got to get it. more questions. Oh, cool. cool. So, go ahead and pick your first question, then. All right. Um. Now, this doesn't have to be the official question. Can we brainstorm a little bit before we land yes. on a, yeah, an official yeah, yeah. question? This game is incredibly right. merciful. Yes. You guys Good. are a crew. You act as a one unit. Quick. So, go ahead huddle. and huddle yes. and decide what <laughs> you want her to ask. Yes. Crew, I'm, I want to know if there's a way to reverse the effect. Are there any other ideas? Anything else we would want to know that's more pressing than that? I feel like we need to find out what's causing the, yeah. ioni the ionizing effect mm -hmm. to begin with. Look for an unfamiliar element or uh, something introduced into the atmosphere that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. yes. what, what's the cause? causing it? Yes. Is there a locus? Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Locus. Fascinating. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um. Well, I think I think the first question then we'll ask is. Uh, uh, I think we is it, what is the cause of this? Is there an, is there a new element or what is that might be a very yeah, big there's question? There's something that we can detect that would be the cause of, of this ionizing effect. And is it reversible? How to reverse it? Well, the reversing thing, you know, maybe we'll get that we can answer assess with from, our yeah, okay. and then we'll we'll figure out our second question, I suppose. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, what is your, officially your first question then? Our first question is. Wait, what was it? <laughs> is there a... <laughs> well, what's the cause? Or what? Is there an identifiable cause? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, is there an identifiable... Identifiable... It's getting late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> late track. She's uh, a crazy track. Late track. <laughs> I need chocolate. I didn't bring my chocolate. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> is there an identifiable... Uh, 
cause for the ionization process that's happening. From well your said. scans, you're not picking up anything in the atmosphere that looks like it would be the cause. In other words, it doesn't look like anything planet side. Mm. There's no evidence to support that anything is motivated. That doesn't look like, let me put it this way, there's no air pressure changes or mm -hmm. biometric changes that have looks like would be the root cause of such an incredible storm system that's built up in the atmosphere. Um, so it's spontaneous? It looks that's not like, the second question. Huh, it, uh, <laughs> what's that? That's not your that's second not question? That's not the second yeah. question. Um, to conclude your first question, yeah. um, this planet, essentially from your records, shows that it has a history of being a very calmed atmosphere. Wind speeds very rarely rise over 30 miles per hour here. Hmm. Um, or in Star Trek speak, kilometers per hour. Um, so, because the United States measurement system is ridiculous. And we know that, but we just, we soldier Freedom on. Freedom units. We is, soldier on. Is there um, some magical science-y thing we can shoot into it and <laughs> make it all go away? <laughs> that is not that's how, how science, science works. works. I think it. control weather is a seventh level spell. Let me just look that I'm up. Gonna I'm gonna tinkering with like gadgets and stuff. This whole weather thing is throwing <laughs> me off. Um, you can just so, like shoot something at it and make it go um, away. So what you're discovering is, is that mm. what you, the readings that you're getting from the sensor scan right now um, compared to what you know of this planet's history, uh, there's nothing to indicate that this has been caused by anything planet side. Okay. Right. It's very unlikely that the changes in barometric pressure and temperature and wind speed is caused by a natural phenomenon occurring on the planet. That's your initial hypothesis. And what else is out there? So what would your second question, what would you like your second question to be? Crew? Science title. What are we thinking um, about the second question? If, so. So if it's not planet side, does that mean that there's some other cause outside of, like in the system in general, mm. that's causing this? Orbital, stellar. Um, it could be something disrupting the magnetosphere, <coughs> so it wouldn't get the same level of protection nice. against ionization. Mm-hmm. Well, what could do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good point. It could I mean, be that. So it protects us from here? stellar radiation. If anyone's going to know, is um, anybody else in the system? Yeah. Mm. I like that. That, that might scan for that? that might answer some questions. Right. Can we ask that as a question from the from so the, or is that yeah. not part of the planet's uh, scam? Scan. Mm. Um, what what was what is the question? We're trying to figure out if there's anybody else, any other ships, any other or, presences, yeah, any other any stations, stations, any satellites, other, any yeah, any other presence, extra planetary planet. objects mm -hmm. that aren't in our current charts. Mm -hmm. um, nothing in the scan reveals that there is anything. There, there's, no th there's no evidence of any other ships in the system. And there's no evidence of any other planetary bodies aside from so its moon that, are, or that, that it's in the system whatsoever. Wow. Is that our second question or no? That was your second yeah, question. Yeah, that okay, was great. it. Yep. <laughs> great. So we got nothing. It's <laughs> worth noting that too, that you are uh, still technically outside the system. A testament yeah. to Sally Ride's incredible sensor suite that you're actually able to scan from this far away and actually get accurate readings. Mm -hmm. Close. It's pretty awesome. A testament to our science officer. <laughs> Thank you. I'm if I were able to be flattered, then I would be. <laughs> I clap you on the back. If I had the capacity to accept a compliment, I would. <laughs> <laughs> it might be one of the nicest things Thanks. that Talon's ever said. Anyone? No. Just, um, just so giving you a heads up. That's what you're able to detect. But I can tell you definitively that there is no presence, yeah, no apparent you. presence on sensors of any other ships in the system. Captain, this is highly unusual, and I... I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I am stumped. You're not the only one, Talon. I'm leaning towards this being not a trap. Leaning towards, not all the way convinced, Commander Rue. And I want to hail our new scientist friends to check up on their status and let them know that we're here and that we're ready to potentially evacuate them out. Okay. Yeah. Um, you hail the colony. Um, so that's going to be you, Bonnie. Hailing. So. Oh, opening hailing roll. frequencies? Yes, you're going to have to roll on this. Oh, I want to say it. Because there's going to, okay. Say yes, it. Captain. Opening hailing frequencies. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So this is going to be a control. Oh, I got to roll. Yep. <laughs> but it's your, it's your roll. I was roll. just going to open it. So okay. Control, control con. Control con. And yep. there is a resistance of two. Oh. Difficulty uh, two? Uh, difficulty is going to be one, but it basically, well, I guess what we could do is why don't we just set the difficulty at at two. Oh, this is what I'll do. What? We'll set the difficulty at two. Okay. But I'm going to increase the complication range also by two. Mm. Mm. So, 
You, 20 is bad, and a 19 is bad, mm -hmm. and an and 18, 18 is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's okay with all of you, I'm going to burn a momentum and grab yeah. another die. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, Excellent idea. idea. Okay. Yeah. For those watching at home, I'm going to take momentum away from our ship to roll an extra die. I'm in my going hand. to spend a point of threat to increase the difficulty by one. <laughs> Ah! So I'm burning a threat because mm. as a GM, I have my own pool called the that's threat good. pool. That's good. That's We're on okay. the right track. We're on the right track. He's doing that. This, so the difficulty have is now three. Burn it down, y'all. Yeah. We don't know how. Burn it down on a comms has. roll. <laughs> burn it down on a comms roll. <laughs> it's all good. I can, I've <laughs> held, exactly. Let's reach out and touch someone. I've held so many frequencies. I'm, I'm up to here with frequencies. Here all I go. All right. So make your roll. Okay. It's Can't control and con. Fourteen. Oh gosh. Wait. With a with a focus in. Helm systems? No. Nope. Computers? Mm, nope. No, I wouldn't say that's a focus. That's going to help you. Small craft? <laughs> <laughs> Can I hail them from my small craft? <laughs> okay. Sure. All right, here we go. Here we go. 14. I got this, y'all. <laughs> Difficulty three? Difficulty you. three with three a complication ones, range what are we rolling? of oh, 18, yeah. So we need three, three successes. Yeah. So it's, it's a tough roll. But I did it! Woo! 12 and 12. 14, 12, and 12. Yep. Three so successes. Can I roll for the ship then? Since What's we had a success. Roll for the ship. Yay. I'm All sorry. Right. Uh, Healing frequencies. We're rolling for the ship oh. too. Comms engineering? Uh, no, this would be comms. This would be. I didn't think communication oh, would be so oh, hard. Yeah, well, you're oh. communicating through oh, a planet that's, that's going through hell right now. Storm. I'm going to say communications yeah. and, con and control. Yeah, con. So 13. Con? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Wait, what did we say about letting Sam roll for the ship? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna roll for I thought a new die might help, but I'm going to roll for right now. Sorry. It's okay, though, because you, hit, you hit three successes. All right. So you know, you're not getting momentum great. from that, but that was a hell of a roll, Bonnie. Well done. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Captain, <clears throat> Haley frequency's open. <laughs> Sorry, Wait, thank you. Thank you. No, hey, Indeed, live it up. You beat a difficulty three roll. Nicely done. Pressing my little button. Bloop, bloop. Okay. Um, you see static appear on the screen, and at first, as the image begins to crystallize in front of you, uh, Captain, you realize it's not the same person you spoke to before. And as it finally comes into being, you see through the static, you see a female scientist, um, also uh, Zach Dorn. Um, and from the personnel file that you read earlier, you know, in fact, this is Dr. Geet Zarima, uh, Dr. Uh, Pranaj's personal assistant and second in command of the research facility. Dr. Geet Zarima, Dr. Dr. Zarima, is that you? It is, Captain. Yes, you're you're uh, Captain Martinez of the Sally Ride, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes, I, I heard that you were contacted. Is Dr. Pranaj all right? He's not, Captain. We've been taking some pretty heavy hits from this storm. Uh, I'm afraid the doctor was injured not too long ago. We're not expecting him to survive. I understand. We're here. We're ready to help with evacuation. How many of there? Uh, how many of you are there? How well, many of you of there are are there? There's 150 of us right now. I'm not convinced that the storm has merited a, a full-scale evacuation just yet. All of our research would be lost if we left the planet now. Uh, all the damage that's being done is pretty significant. But if we could find a way, Captain, to stay here, <laughs> that would be ideal. Otherwise. A decade's worth of scientific work would be lost. Well, I'd rather lose a decade of your work than your own lives, Doctor. We're going to do what we can to ensure that all of your work remains intact while still getting you some medical aid as soon as possible. We're on our way. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, we'll uh, see you soon. Is there anything else we need to know before we get there, Doctor? Just that we've discovered that the ionization in the atmosphere might make it difficult for you to use transporters. Yes, we've determined that as well, yeah. Oh, well, then I suppose you're all set then. Research station out. Cuts out. I'd love to have an insight check. <laughs> I think Rue would roll that, even though my insight is balls. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the official so score. Uh, I believe it's balls out. Balls there. Yeah, it's so nice. all my insight is insight balls. balls. <laughs> balls? Yeah, um, can, we, um, can someone assist? If I, if I no, I, I'm not going to allow an assist oh. on this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paranoid Sally all Ride, on my own. The Sally Ride just leans towards you and goes, I, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> the whole no, ship. Like the ship goes, Can I assist roll? Sam like, on oh, their roll? Oh, I think she's trying to tell us something. Sally um, Ride, what is it? Roll. Their roll. Cool. 
So insight security? Um, this Trying would be to figure out whether they're a trap person? Insight security, insight command? Yes, I would say this is an insight, insight security, security check. Cool. Um, go ahead and make the roll, the difficulty. Mm. Bad. bad, sad, bad. I'll say the difficulty's two. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah? hey -o. Woohoo! Yeah! Best roll of the night. <laughs> yeah. What'd you get? Um, that was two successes since I don't think I'm rolling into a focus for me. Uh, probably not. What are your focuses? Uh, closest might be composure, but other than that, no, yeah, it doesn't fail. So two successes. You succeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give me that insight. They, they seem very nervous. It's hard to tell if that's necessarily because of the storm or for something else, but your instinct, Rue, your instinct tells you that you're, you're not 100% convinced they're nervous because of the atmosphere. Something about this just doesn't, it's, it's that paranoia, you're not sure you could call it paranoia. No. You, you've got, you've seen some shit. You have been through the ringer, you have combat instincts, and while some people would claim that you're kind of edgy, your instincts tell you there's something going on here at the station. You don't have anything but intuition leading that, so it's not even, you're not even sure if it's worth reporting, but your instinct is telling you <laughs> There may be more than there seems to be. They don't seem like they're nervous just for one reason. It may not be insidious, but it does seem like there's an anxiety level that's not matched with what's happening. Captain, if I may speak freely? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I feel completely capable of getting a small craft down to this planet and back, but evacuating 150 uh, would basically mean multiple trips back and forth. And through that storm, I don't even think a shuttlecraft would, I don't know how many trips it would take. I don't know how many personnel are down there. Do you want to roll say, for that, Bonnie? Pardon? Do you want to roll for that? As Helm's woman, you could totally make that calculation if you okay. wanted to know, for sure. Uh, sure, what do I roll? Okay, so that is going to be a, it's gonna be the same thing. It's, I'm gonna Insight. say it's, uh, no, for oh. this I'm gonna say it's gonna be reason, reason. and con. 14. Today? All right, make your roll. Yep. Okay. Difficulty one, two. And would my I'm gonna say difficulty two. two. And would my focus in small craft? Yes. Help I'll let with that this? I'll let that apply. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Fourteen. Let's see what we got going. Two successes. Four and six. That's oh four so successes because my con is four and I if I use my focus no that's one success one Wait, success mm -hmm. no but that's that's two successes two. but one of my successes it's is two, two. So three that's three, three successes, total successes. Yes. Hard. so we get a momentum so, so you I get a one point momentum woo <laughs> un momentum woo all right math um math. I just fly the thing that doesn't mean I know math <laughs> so how long would it take to so, to if, to potentially evacuate 150 scientists with a shuttlecraft how many shuttlecrafts do we have on board. We have five shuttlecrafts. We have I believe five shuttlecrafts. So, yeah. four. We four. have four, but we also have an Orion shuttle. Ah. Um, oh. But we can only run uh, three oh, at a time. Oh, tight. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But we don't have five it's on our stages. Ship right. I don't, know, I don't know how many uh, people would be capable of flying through that. <laughs> it's a you know, it's I a cannot. Thing. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I honestly It's not going to be easy. I, I cannot think of a reason why you wouldn't it's have that shuttle still. Yeah. The Orion yeah, shuttle? Yeah. Oh no, that's a true We tractored shuttle. it in. Whoa! Do you guys yes, remember you escaped from the Orion I asked the, the writers Syndicate whether it was shuttle. one of our shuttles after oh, the Oh, but I'm not as familiar I, with flying that one as I, I am a Starfleet shuttle. I love that Sam added Orion shuttle to the inventory. Wow. <laughs> Look, hey. do I want to risk Federation shuttles when maybe sometimes <laughs> I might want so, to just risk one that we Starfleet would be isn't going to get on us about? I'm just going to tell you straight up, I'm going to tell you straight up that Orion shuttle will totally work but it does not have anywhere near the finesse or computer out, output right. of oh. a Federation Yeah, no, shuttle. it's for when we want a dump yeah. shuttle. We have <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, right. it's the, I don't give a damn what I happens well, the shuttle shuttle. I would not dump feel comfortable shuttle. flying, <laughs> hashtag dump shuttle. <laughs> I don't know if I'd feel comfortable <laughs> flying the Orion shuttle through, the, through that atmosphere since okay. I'm not as familiar so, as, as I am with Starfleet. Let show. me answer your question yeah. then. Okay. Yeah, um, so safe. you've got the momentum, you can pull that momentum or you can spend it immediately. What would you like to do? Otherwise, I'm just going to tell gonna, you based I off the I think I want you to pull it for what I have to fly through the thing. Okay. So <laughs> what I can tell you is it, it would probably take um, somewhere in the vicinity, let's see. 
it would probably take you somewhere around close to 20 trips back and forth. Mm. It could be done trips. in maybe okay. two, maybe three days tops. Okay. Two, three days, 20 trips. Depending, depending Hopefully on... Hopefully not too many of these scientists. That's using one shuttle though. You have, right. you have, yeah. you have a bunch of shuttles. We have more than one sh shuttle. You I could don't know conceivably, how many in 24 hours, you could conceivably evacuate the entire research facility with these shuttles. Or in one hour evacuate it with the full might of the USS Sally Ride. If you land the Sally Ride down there, you can get everyone out in one exactly. trip. Exactly. Um, I am back. I am packed. I am just like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, <laughs> looks like yeah. the doctor's ready to go. Here's my worry. They were so reluctant to evacuate. Commander, any thoughts? I think it is worth approaching the situation tactically. I think it's all the more reason not to send a few shuttles. I think if there's any reason to be concerned, we're going to want the full might of the Sally Ride. And I'm leaning towards that. I agree with the commander, and I would also add that if we attempt to pilot the Sally Ride to the surface and are successful, we could not only evacuate the crew, but we could also potentially evacuate much of their research. We may want to check our systems to make sure that they're all run, they're, we have enough power and strength to, run a to withstand that, that storm. I think we can. And I can think we run a diagnostic? Jib crosses his arms. He says, I'll make sure she can withstand the storm. You bet on that. Good. Doctor, any thoughts? Let's go. Okay, I'm going to make a call. We're going to take the entire ship down there. Oh if this boy. is a trap, we've got the might of the USS Sally Ride behind us. And if it Planet isn't, we're going to be able to get everybody out of there as quickly as possible. We have an excellent helmswoman. I know that we can do this. I have faith in my crew, and we're going to get it done. Okay. Lieutenant Commander, uh, if you wouldn't mind running a quick diagnostic on those shields for me before we attempt to go through there. Uh, sure. Just, just to be safe. Um, he turns around and says, he starts pressing a few buttons. He's like, running a level three diagnostic now. Should be done in about 15 minutes by the time we get to the planet. I'll be done in engineering. He gets up from his console and goes to the turbo lift. We are still on yellow alert. We are approaching the planet at yellow alert. Are you calling yeah. for a yellow alert? Commander, yes. go ahead and call for yellow alert. Yellow alert. Yellow alert. All right. It's a good habit. All right. Raise shields. <laughs> Ship goes to yellow alert. Shields, shields are up. go up. What Defense what systems are online. Are there lights? Are we going to have lights? <laughs> it's on the interweb. It's the Twitch oh. overlay. Oh, I got so excited. I was like, where's the light? You don't get to experience it. it. The audience gets I'm to experience it. I'm going to bring it. one. Hey, here are the a mind. little light. Experiencing yeah. it right yeah. now. I'm going to buy one and put a little yellow revolving light right here. All right. This you is take, what I need. You take the ship shows. into the system. Okay. Um, as we move into the star system itself, um, you guys uh, begin to approach. Um, and as you uh, come out of, uh, I'm guessing, full impulse in order yeah. to get to the planet in just a matter of minutes. Yes. Um, arriving at Citrian 7, you're able to actually see a much more up close view um, of the storm that's taking place across the atmosphere of the planet. The planet looks like it's in a state of pure anger. <laughs> it is, um, I would say there's probably about 45% cloud cover, which is a lot for yeah. any planet. Um, and uh, the storm systems, they don't look like, they don't look hurricane strength at all. It looks like a lot of ionization. Um, it looks like wind speeds are probably currently reaching somewhere up to 60 miles per hour, which is enough for tornadoes. Um, but uh, F1 tornadoes. Um, so the planet looks like it's in a, it, essentially it looks like a pretty heavy thunderstorm right now. The, enough that it's covering 45% of the planet. There is indication from the sensor readings that you had before that it might be getting a little stronger or that there's indications that it could be increasing in strength. But essentially right now, it's actually not going to be that hard to fly the Sally ride down oh, through this thing. Cool. It's essentially going to be like flying it down in the middle of a heavy thunderstorm. Okay. That just happens to be covering almost half the whole planet. This um, is nothing compared to that nebula. Yeah. I this, this. Huh. Actually, that's very true. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. not going to be as difficult as flying okay. through that nebula that you All just right. went through. Well, then so, I'm ready. Um, so Difficulty we'll go nine. ahead and... Um, but hmm. Talon, I need you to go ahead and um, make a sensor, uh, a sensor scan again okay. using your reason and sensors, or your reason and science. All right. And so who wants you. to roll for the Sally Wright? Me. I think. Um, or someone else. Yeah, someone because else. Because I'm going to have someone you roll. Else. We're having someone else do that this time. As well. Sure. Doctor? Sure. 
Yeah, borrow your sheet. sheet. Yeah. All right, so make your roll. The difficulty Ooh. is the difficulty on this is going to be three. Thank you. Mm. Oh. It's a is a tricky tricky roll. Momentum. But, um, well, I have two three? successes. You um, so what? You have a focus in astrophysics, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to apply that to this. Great. So. And one of my rolls was four. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So that's so three, three successes. successes. Three successes. Excellent. Oh. What do we need for Sally here? The Sally yeah. ride is going to be rolling, uh, I sensors. believe it's sensors plus science. science? Or plus All right, target 15. Atta girl. And how much? Oh, and it's sensor, so it's down a DC. Success. Number oh, it is down nine. a DC. Yeah, so success. two. Success. Number nine. Success, nine. So, so two, so, yes, yeah, three. So you gain two momentum. Woo! A total of four successes. Woo! Um, we're gonna need um, that later. Which is good because um, now I need you to make a con roll. Here we go. Because okay. the moment you guys start approaching atmosphere, it's it is kind of a beautiful sight, Captain. As the Sally ride, um, as she comes out of full impulse, and you begin to navigate using maneuvering thrusters towards the atmosphere, you begin to in see the initial flare up of uh, fire playing across the shields as you go into entry. Um, and that's, at this point, it should be a relatively smooth ride. Inertial dampeners would take care of all of this. Um, it is a beautiful sight to see the curvature of the planet and the blues as you guys begin to settle down into the gray skies of mm. Citrian 7. And then I need you to make your, so this is going to be a control plus con. Okay, 14. And what, you have helm, don't you? I have as helm systems, navigation. Helm systems helm will systems. totally give you a focus here. Okay. Uh, so make your roll, the difficulty... And I'm not screwing with you when I say this. The difficulty is four. And there's hey, a reason, that momentum we just there's a reason yeah, behind yeah. this. So I'm going to do one. Yeah. Oh, I need, to, I need to burn two to use another dice. Right? Yep. Oh. Uh -huh. is that, is, are we agreed? Can I do that? I think, it, I think? Only have a three mysterious dice? con roll yep. sounds like a great <laughs> thing to spend momentum on. Yeah. Yeah. Paranoia I, I is not my just two. in character a giant <laughs> So we're spending three, three, three momentum. Everything has been validated yep. since I started playing with you, Eric. It's kind of okay. You have not earned the it's paranoia. Kind of it's kind of true. Okay. So so you've learned to read my And who's going to roll for Sally? Is Sally right? Yes. Sally gets to roll in this too. Someone gets to roll for Sally, not Sam. Sorry, Sam. No, absolutely. Sam's with you on that. Sam agrees. Dice in that jail. Okay. <laughs> what is what? Too many what's dice. Sally's role on this? Engines yes. con. Uh, this yeah, actually, mm, I actually think this is going to be structure con. Structure. Yes. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah. Structure. Yeah, I got the vibe. Not as good. Yeah. Eight, so ten. Eleven. Total. Eleven. Oh, so I'm gonna be aiming at Can't eleven. Count. All right. And okay. I am going to spend two threat. Yeah. Oh, no. To add a complication. No. Oh. To increase the range. No, I immediately added a complication. Oh. Oh. So there's going to be something not cool happening. So we're trying Great. to land right Can't now. wait. So yes. control okay. and con, 14. Yeah. Uh, difficulty is four. I, oh, I'm aware. I'm such but a But I'm using my focus okay. in helm. I'm such a patach. I need, come on, low numbers. Come on, crit. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, one success? OK, don't worry, because um, in this game, for, for now, they specifically address stuff like this. Oh, good. In this game, um, there is a mechanic that allows you to see succeed no matter what you're doing, but it adds oh, significant wait, wait. complications to the story. I have, oh, right. I have talents. Yeah, what are your talents? <laughs> I Hold have, on. Wait, I'm talented. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm a talented person. I just um, forgot I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go that far. You, you see Bonnie just go, oh no, I'm not going to make this, and jump up onto the command console and start tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, the celebrity rights fine. Okay. Um, Oh wait, no, I I did wait. Whenever a character succeeds at a test, but I didn't succeed at a test. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dang it! Okay, hold on. Let me hold on. I can well, fix you, this. Yeah. My driving is not bad. I swear. Hold on. Let me see. Do I need to? I don't know if I can fix this, you guys. I have failed you. Hey. Okay, but what is this mechanism that we're this mechanic that Wait, we're going to use? Can Sally still? I'm just going to find can out. She, she can only help if you succeeded. Oh, yeah, really? she can't. Yeah. You got to fly her, and oh, she's no. got to be able to. All right. Well, what's Wait, the whenever you attempt yeah. attacks by the ship's computer or sensors, you may reroll one d20. It's structure, not Which... computers or sensors. Yep. All right. Oh, what's now the I'm the killjoy. What's the damage? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, oh wait. Did you? Did you? Uh, Increase the difficulty, or as well, or not? Difficulty the, was four. Yeah, no, I know. That. You I, mean the complicated? <laughs> you mean the complication range? Yeah. No, yeah. complication okay, range oh, is cool. still twenty. Then we're yeah. good for that um, part. It's okay because you're okay, gonna. Great. This is this is succeed <sighs> at the cost. I mean, you're gonna get complications. Yeah. This I wasn't. Know this wasn't. This wasn't. Oh my god, we're all gonna die now. 
Well, but I this, feel like it is. This is to, what, so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to... This is the first time I failed at flying. And this is the first time you guys have gotten a complication. So this is what happens. At about the same time you go into the atmosphere, you begin to realize something is terribly wrong. This should be an easy landing. Can I blame the engineer? the Sally engineer? ride begins to lurch suddenly. Oh, no. And you feel the entire, everyone feels oh, the wait. starship. Yeah, we're lurching, ready? Left. <laughs> All right, <laughs> other side, other side. Now shimmy, shake, shake, get ready. Oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> so We rehearsed that. Did you, yeah, watch the episode of Tabletop with Will and Jerry Ryan. It's great. Yeah. They'll, they'll instruct you on how to do it. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, so as you guys enter the atmosphere, um, Lark, as you're at the controls, you begin to realize she's fighting you. Okay. And um, as you guys are entering the atmosphere, it's not the initial impact of you guys on the atmosphere. There's suddenly an un... There's a, a gravitational uh, discrepancy in the entry cycle that is that you did not account for. It shouldn't be there. Okay. You're actually noticing that there's inertial forces playing against you and it causes a drag and for a split second the Sally ride as she's entering the atmosphere kind of fishtails a little bit to the right which is enough to cause the entire ship to just a ripple of turbulence shakes the ship um, violently and it doesn't take it doesn't take a helmswoman to know that something is terribly wrong and it's the exact moment that this happens Talon that you register a tremendous gravitational force emanating from the moon. And just as the Sally ride hits Atmo and begins to dip nose down a little too steep, especially for a starship entering the atmosphere, you begin to realize, um, just as you're looking at the calculations, the moon's orbital cycle, it's wrong. In fact, the moon looks like it's about 600 kilometers closer to the planet than it should be. Did that just happen? <laughs> no. But with that outstanding role in the sensors and you guys actually being close to in system as you're entering the atmosphere, the gravitational force, the, the, the shearing effect that you're feeling as you're entering the atmosphere of the planet, the sensors detects it and you're able to analyze it. And as the ship lurches, you realize that the moon is actually moving towards the planet. Okay, so it is not my driving. No. Cool. Captain. And the ship lurches forward and all of a sudden on the view screen, you notice the horizon dip, Captain. And as everyone kind of grips their chairs instinctively from the, even with the inertial dampeners, the ship is being rocked. Yeah. And as y'all dip down, you see the landscape miles and miles below a, a huge cloud cover. S just little specks. You can see the ground and mountain ranges um, underneath the cloud cover down deep below, probably about 60 miles straight down. And the Sally ride for a moment completely loses control and she tips off to the right. And oh, for man. the moment, the Sally ride is in a spin as she falls out of the sky. Okay, I can fix this. Tell me what to do to fix it. Yeah. No! <laughs> no, I can and fix it. And that's where we have to no! stop. No! <laughs> okay, let me just write down this note. At the beginning of next episode, I'm going to yell, status report. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna write here. We have to pause there. Okay. Oh, as you guys no. have reached the atmosphere. Okay. Well, I am hooked. Citrian 7. <laughs> I gotta know what happens next. <laughs> well, I guess you're gonna have to come back next you're Wednesday. You're gonna have to come back next Wednesday, actually, we'll to be a captain week. again. Okay. Oh, let's do it tomorrow. I think I'm free. <laughs> so we had, to, we had to do our initial introductions and get some stuff going with character stuff, but now we are well full underway into the mystery of what's going on in Citrian 7, as the Sally ride is... The pull. You're gonna have a hell of a pilot eating oh, chuck no, ahead of you. That was why I'm... I'm ready. All right. Um, that was a really yeah. bad roll, you guys. That was the worst roll ever. Who it's else okay. is remembering that great moment in Star Trek Generations where Data just goes, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about that before yeah. the stream. Yeah, yeah. 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 we were. Oh, uh, so anyway, that that'll mind. conclude our <laughs> very first game session for Shield of Tomorrow. Woo! As we are well underway. Um, job, so we're going to go ahead and jump oh, out of here. But Remember, we have one momentum. We have Whenever one we, momentum. Whenever okay. we we're make still a in the same scene. Well, That's true. Hold. You're still in the same scene. So okay. write that down. So just make a note of that so we remember for next time. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Didn't mean to so we're, still, we're still technically at the beginning of episode one, the poll. So we'll All be right. heading into act two when we get back next Wednesday, same time, 9.30 p.m. here on Geek and Sundry Twitch. Um, uh, so before we sign off, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in to our very first episode Yay! of Shield of Tomorrow. We have so much planned for the show. There's a big a sweeping storyline we've got planned for our crew of the mm -hmm. USS Sally Ride. Um, I want to thank you guys. This is the third time now y'all have stepped into your characters and I love everyone's character so much. 
Um, this has been a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to the continuation of this game. Um, thank you again, everybody, so much for tuning in. And stay tuned, because next week we're going to have... There's a really good chance we might actually have something kind of special to show everybody uh, next week. So definitely tune in, because the show is going to continue evolving. What's up? Can we get a round of applause for Eric? He does such a great job. Yes. Can we get some oh love gosh. for Eric in the chat? Yes. Thank get you. some Eric love in the chat, y'all. Yes, yes, thank you. It's so good. So good. Wow. Um, and a special thank you to Matt Mercer, who let me borrow his DM screen. Because yes. <laughs> we were still using... We had the blessings of the, of the Mercer. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. Um, so anyway, um, that'll do it for us tonight. Um, thank you again for tuning in, and we will see you next Wednesday. Hailing frequencies closed. Oh, no. Thanks for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll be here every week with the ongoing adventures of the USS Sally Ride. New episodes air on Geek and Sundry Twitch and Alpha every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to see more, you can start your free 30-day trial on projectalpha.com. Yeah.